This is Force 13 Live. We've been tracking the progress of Tropical Storm Fay all day long and since yesterday when we did the Tropical Weather Bulletin live last night. You can see the storm right now on your screen and it is, uh, well, springing its way towards the coast of New Jersey. I say it's sort of like that because it's doing a bit of a, uh, a coil movement as it... Uh, meanders towards the coast of southern New Jersey which it looks like it might just make landfall there in the next few hours the way it's going moving northwards right now and uh, most of the uh, strongest winds have already reached the coast and have moved inland uh, the actual center of the storm is only about 20 miles offshore at this point at the last hour it was 25 miles east of Bethany Beach Delaware my name's Nathan Foy, and uh, with me today on this stream, a lot of people, um, some of them closer to the storm than others, and I'll introduce them all now. Uh, we've got Elliot, Isaac, um, Michael, Dimitri, Orlando, Rain, and Strat, of course. And good, um, afternoon. good afternoon. And Strat, is that your view right now? Uh, yeah, this is the view right outside my window. It's a bit of a, a janky setup. It's the webcam that's normally facing me just turned around with a piece of scotch tape to keep it in place. Um, of course. But, you know, uh, this is a general lookout in southwest Connecticut right now, pretty close to the shore of the Long Island Sound um, in the Fairfield County area, just to give a you know geographic idea for people. Uh, nothing really bad here has happened at all so far. We've had a bit of gusty wind and... Uh, a rain band or two, but nothing too significant. You know, uh, the worst for this particular area is probably going to be, uh, you know, more of the overnight hours, you know, into the late evening. And we should be in the clear mostly by, you know, later Saturday morning in this particular area. But uh, in case anything wild happens in the next hour or so, uh, whenever we're live, you'll have this uh, live feed just to take a look at the gusts of wind that are going on uh, near the storm. Excellent. Uh, we've also got Elliot showing us some radar here somewhere. Yep. As you can see. No, we um, can't see just yet. It's not loaded. <laughs> oh. Usual issues. Well, we'll just show you ours at the minute, and you can talk us through what you're looking at. Alrighty. Go ahead. Um. As you can see by the radar, um, you're sort of getting a lot of rainfall up through New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland into Pennsylvania, um, and you even got a few bands that are um, getting up toward the New York region. So, Definitely. and rainfall is expected to be the um, most significant threat with the system. You're already seeing some flash flood watches and warnings um, headed up um, through uh, the Mid-Atlantic region especially in New Jersey at the moment. That's where the heaviest rain is so far. And the rainfall is going to continue to spread north, probably going to taper off as you get further north, but still going to be definitely something to watch out for. Now, we've been looking at the rainfall amounts for quite a while because that's probably arguably the primary concern of this storm. And we're talking four to eight inches, but we're looking at some of the rain rates have been quite high recently. Are these numbers going to rise higher than that? Yeah, definitely. While four to eight inches is going to be your general total, um, some rain bands are going to be heavier than others, and you could see amounts get maybe a few inches higher than that. And even so, it's going to be important. If you're getting 48 inches of rain, you're likely going to see some flash flooding. Um, so that's going to be our general concern for now. And if I'm not mistaken, there's some coastal flooding occurring right now, isn't there? Yeah, and phase winds are starting to cause some beach erosion, um, which is, um, and it's also been causing quite a few high waves recently um, throughout the mid-Atlantic coast. So if you're going to the beaches, might be best to stay home if you aren't staying home already. Oh, I noticed you on that screen now. Okay, great. Well, this is us. I was just getting that ready. Uh, but there's our four panel display. And you can see down there as well some imagery from Isaac. What's going on down there? This is a live webcam from Seaside Heights, New Jersey here. Earlier, there was a heavy rain band I moved on through, but now that's kind of passed on by now. So now they're getting probably some light to a sprinkly rain right now. Uh, off on the 
far uh, right of your screen, you can see some of the storm surge being uh, swept up by this tropical storm. Uh, not the worst um, to be seen, but uh, still something there. And of course, not many people on the boardwalk due to uh, this tropical storm. And then here's, an, here's another view uh, facing directly towards the coastline here. And you can see this, this storm surge action a little bit better there. Nathan? Mm, yes. And we're talking only modest amounts of storm surge. Yes, I forgot the exact measurement, but um, it's not it, supposed to be uh, too bad. Was it about three yeah, feet straight? Uh, yeah, they were expecting a maximum storm surge of about you know three feet for kind of the lower lying areas in the uh, uh, New Jersey coastline to Long Island coastline as well. Probably yes. has come to fruition. Uh, hopefully, instead of looking at me there, just sitting there, you'll be able to see our other little panel of radar imagery. Uh, but if you have any comments or questions for us whilst we're on the air today, send us a message. Start your message with Force 13 all in text, as always, and we'll get on to your questions and answers. And there is some more from the radar there, so that's pretty cool. Um, I do think it's interesting note, you know, if you don't mind me interjecting with this. Not at all. You know, where we're watching Faye is that for a good chunk of the areas that we were even talking about just last night, the, the worst of the impacts are already coming to an end. You know, southern New Jersey right now, unless there's a massive blow of convection very close to the center of the storm, which uh, isn't too likely uh, considering the sheer and colder sea surface temperatures that it's starting to track over compared to yesterday, they already are mostly done with their rainfall in that particular region. And the winds are going to start dying down pretty soon, too, as the center of circulation moves past them you know up towards you know even central new jersey right now uh is getting closer to the end of their total remaining rainfall and then uh mm -hmm. you know that the totals are going to start to spread into the rest of the northeast you know uh it's you know a lot of excitement around this because of the location it's impacting for the first time but uh i think the nhc rainfall graphic was up there a little bit earlier it's uh, not too outdated it's made a, about an hour ago um and and valid as of you know this morning most of, you know, southern New England and like, you know, New York coast, New Jersey, southwest Connecticut is really only expecting another, you know, two to four inches maximum uh, through any significant swath of land, you know, with, of course, isolated areas higher, which is where you get the, the threat for storm surge. But, you know, overall, a, a lot of the main threat from the storm, um, at least for more southern regions that we've been talking about, are already starting yep. to fade out. Yeah, and the... Uh... Well, you look at the coastline now, uh, the rain is ending in southern New Jersey near the center of this storm. It's quite ironic, yeah, exactly. but it's it, yeah, it's because it really it's, a, it's an example of how it's not fully um, bona fide tropical cyclone anymore. Yeah, I mean, you know, the sheer and just its general location is already starting to force a post-tropical transition. Uh, I think, you know, if you have satellite imagery up right now, you know, the worst of the rainfall from the system... Uh, in terms of convection is starting to move, you know, in the next couple hours uh, for New York City and Long Island, you know, during the day right now uh, is when the most inclement conditions will probably occur there. Yeah, the worst and of I it is now about uh, getting towards the northern third of New Jersey into Pennsylvania, yeah. into Long Island, just about. And actually, Dimitri, you're joining us from Long Island today. How are the conditions there for you right now? Hello, this is... Um... Um, I think there's going to be some rain in the forecast there. Um, I think there's also going to... I think there's also going to be a bit of a wind... I think there's going to be a bit of a wind threat as well. Um, um, especially... I think the main threat is going to be wind. Well, hold on. The rain is going to be the threat today. Um, definitely there's a threat for wind. I think further inland on the island, um, but I think the major threat is rain. I think I've heard, like, when I looked yep. at the um, map today, I think Farmingdale could be in for a bit of a wild thing today. So that is a bit of a concern. And we've also got Orlando. You're near uh, Philadelphia. Um, has there been, well, we've heard rumblings about flooding concerns there. How's the situation? Yeah, uh, around the Philadelphia area and uh, more specifically around, like, you know, uh, the whole area from Delmarva to the whole Delaware Valley has been experiencing a lot of uh, rainfall. Um, I believe right now my area is actually under a flash flood warning. That's right, um, it is. 
And so, yeah, um, freshwater flooding is the main concern for us. I mean, there has been breezy conditions that might have been causing some power disruptions, but they've, uh, as far as I'm aware, they've remained uh, pretty minor. But mostly it's just uh, hazardous conditions outside related to rain and uh, flooding concerns. So, like, if you're driving around the area, it'll pro you'll probably run into a lot of troubles with that. Certainly looks that way. Um, who else have we got here right now? Oh, yes, we've also got uh, Michael. You're tracking what the recon are, recon planes are up to. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, most recent recon uh, just finished. They're currently assembling a new recon plane to go ahead from the, the 53rd weather reconnaissance in Bluxy, Mississippi. Yeah, All right. and I presume that that would probably be the last recon flight going into this just because it's making landfall pretty soon now. And what are you expecting from this storm over in Connecticut, Strat? I mean, you know, it, the same thing I've been expecting since, you know, it was in Invest and similar things as to what I was talking to last night on the stream. You know, for those in southern New England, we're looking at, in terms of impacts, uh, pretty similar from what we'd see to a typical nor'easter uh, that, you know, comes up this area, you know, in February, March, or April. Um, you know, we've already dealt with storms, at least for impacts in, you know, New England to, to similar strength of what this will be uh, in this year alone. So, you know, localized uh, heavier rainfall totals that could bring the threat for flash flooding, especially in uh, pretty sure Fairfield County is going to be the highest risk for that due to the, uh, you know, two to four inches of rain expected more widespread in that region. Uh, isolated amounts a bit higher possible, of course. And then just some general stronger sustained winds, you know, especially on the coastline and just a bit inland, you could get up to tropical storm force still um, as this thing moves north because, you know, uh, even though it's a pretty disorganized system and with the shear pushing a lot of convection off, uh, sustained winds are actually pretty decent in size away from the center as well. Um, and that won't necessarily go away instantly. Um, yeah, quite a bit but... there right now, Isaac. Where's that? Oh, sorry, where? This is uh, in Atlantic Highlands, and I believe uh, northern New Jersey. So yeah, that those, area those are bouncing. probably getting a lot of the uh, the main part of that band right now. And it is just one fat band on the northern and western side of this storm, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last night it was one blob on the eastern side, now it's one blob on the northern side. You know how it is. Well, looks that way. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, I was looking at the models and I was kind of forecasting this kind of condition. It was just uh, some seem to have a more bias towards uh, getting closer to Delmarva and it seemed it kind of just got closer to Cape May instead. And so now we're just having like all the rain just move from the east side, as Strat mentioned, now to the west side. Yeah. And, and something I'd like to note, just because, you know, a, a lot of people are always talking about strength and stuff, you know, it's still a 60 mile an hour storm right now. So a bit higher than what the initial forecasts uh, were calling for about, you know, 45 to 50. Uh, and especially if that, you know, strongest point exactly gets on land, that particular location is going to have a bit more trouble to deal with uh, than, you know, was expecting 24 to 36 hours ago. Uh, but wherever this makes landfall uh, isn't going to matter too much because of the fact that the actual center is pretty devoid of convection has this uh, mm. very visible when you take a look at the uh, infrared imagery and you just see the center as a bare little swirl uh, so the main impacts are already you know well north of the center so even if it makes landfall uh, you know in southern New Jersey you know the worst impacts at that point will already be up towards New York and Connecticut um, you know potentially starting to stretch towards Massachusetts as well uh, it'll you know cause weakening to happen slightly sooner but it's not supposed to you know shoot inland towards new jersey and into pennsylvania if it comes inland new jersey it's gonna come in just by a little bit and then just skirt up the coastline um for the most part kind of like you know i'm not comparing the intensities or damages at all uh -oh, but in terms here we of go back at this point you know a bit like irene but obviously damage is not the same at all someone wrote in the comments section earlier this morning and it was a great comment earlier that it was um it was su the someone bought Irene from the dollar store. <laughs> That's I about right. Dollar, yeah, I don't have to agree with that. One and they charge you too. Don't agree with that. Wait, uh, what are you? Wait. Yes. Wait, repeat that one more time. You just said. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what they would call it round here—a pound shop version of Irene. <laughs> 
<laughs> very cheap, very cheap alternative. <laughs> but it's the wrong time of year. It is the wrong time of year. Uh, you don't really, really usually in in early season. We are still early season in the tropics right now. You you would expect if a storm was to come up the east coast, it would look a little bit like this. Yep, something like that. You'd presume, but. Uh, at least this time you're to have a storm, you know, come straight north after forming off the Carolinas, uh, you know, from a prior non-tropical disturbance instead of, you know, kind of shooting off to the east or northeast, uh, you know, far out into the North Atlantic or trying to barely skirt Atlantic Canada is pretty unusual in that part. Yeah. You know, most of that's because of the high pressure area that's kind of blocking it from doing that, along with the a, a couple of the other steering currents. Uh, across the continental United States. They're just helping nudge it northward instead of out to sea. Um, and the reason you know, why it was never realistic to forecast that this would become a hurricane as it was moving along this track is mainly down to the sea surface temperatures. It formed over very high sea surface temperatures aided by the, uh, the Gulf Stream and now it's moved out of it as it gets towards the U.S. East Coast because the Gulf Stream sort of cuts that corner, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, even though right now it's over like, you know, 26 is 25. Is it still 26? Yeah, those areas are 26, 25, and 24, which aren't necessarily going to, you know, uh, make a storm dissipate on their own. Uh, they're not really conducive enough for, you know, intensification, you know, occurring from anything really other than bare clinic reasons. Uh, I would note, though, you know, you, exactly like you said, this is why it wasn't really supposed to become a hurricane. If you wanted this to become a hurricane, it would have had to form, you know, closer to the latitude of Georgia and like Florida and then move, you know, the exact same direction that it has rather than form uh, closer to the Carolina, Virginia border in terms of latitude. So here's our four panel display where you can see everything that's going on right now. And I do want some feedback on this because we're trying a few new things, whether people like the four panel display or whether people prefer to just go cycle through them one by one. So, uh, we're all ears on how better we can present all of the stuff. Uh, but there is the latest, and you can see on the uh, top left there, uh, that's the imagery that we've been using quite a lot today, showing the visible with the uh, radar overlay. And you can quite clearly see that the center of this storm is somewhat exposed, you've got to say. There's very little convection over the center right now. And it's been pretty much like that its whole existence, you know. Um... There's the original low-level center, and then the, uh, you know, blob of convection, uh, you know, burrowed another area of low set pressure to the ground that became the main center that we still have right now, and then it immediately got blown off by shear. And there was talk last night that uh, we could see a potential landfall in, you know, the really southern tip of New Jersey, uh, or um, more like the Delmarva. Uh, peninsula as well if that happened again and that would have caused you know a bit of tilt and direction of the storm briefly before a correction back onto its mean path now there are um, a few questions strat about um places like massachusetts and eastern long island and up that way uh, but it would appear that the uh, expected effects would be decreasing for there now because it's continuing to trend west yeah, you know, especially in the, the last hour or two, it's kind of had a, a bit of a loop to the west before, you know, redirecting itself back northward. Just a little bit of an oscillation, so... You know what it reminds uh, me of? I was trying to explain at the start. You know one of those metal coiled springs and you stretch it out and it's like yeah. doing that right now. That's a good descriptor of it, yeah. Because, you know, you can see that, like, the main area of, um, you know, center of circulation kind of take a loop to the west and then continue its bound back to the north which is making a potential landfall area look more like initially central new jersey rather than um northern new jersey or new york like we are you know prior expecting but for you know long island uh rhode island and massachusetts as a whole at least eastern massachusetts uh overall impacts that means you know probably some less rainfall especially because the main convection is looped around towards the north side rather than the east and general wind impacts won't be as significant you know uh, especially for Long Island, you know, parts that will probably still get tropical storm force winds, they're not encountering them already. Uh, but once you get to, you know, far eastern Long Island, uh, Rhode Island, and southeastern Massachusetts, you're not going to see uh, too much uh, stormy activity in terms of sustained wind. Um, central and western Massachusetts, though, heading into Saturday, could see some more inclement conditions just because the storm is actually supposed to move through there, even if it's a tropical depression at that time. Uh, higher rainfall totals and you know minimized risk for flash flooding 
are possible in those regions compared to you know more of eastern massachusetts so strout that's your webcam there right now what are those conditions like there looks pretty quiet uh it's been pretty quiet for the most part uh i don't know if the webcam can show it exactly perfectly just because you know uh you know there's a window and screen in the way but we are actually having some light rain right now um okay. nothing too severe and a little bit of gusty wind we've had some stronger bursts earlier uh, and a bit of heavier rain earlier as well. Uh, you know, if you take a look at the satellite imagery, we're not really in the thick of it yet, but probably within yeah. the next six hours, we'll see the worst of it in this particular area in terms of rain and wind. It's coming. Um, yeah, it's actually, the rain's actually starting to pick up a little bit right now. So we're expecting, you know, a little over two inches, maybe closer to four if we get unlucky and have, you know, a couple time periods of heavier rain. And uh, uh, speaking and of rain, rain, he's also one of our live team members as well. Uh, up in Hartford, Connecticut. I imagine the uh, current conditions are the same or less impressive there as well. Uh, as of now, um, I got my window open. Uh, nothing's really happening now, but we are under the cloud cover of the storm, but no rain has started yet. It's really supposed to start, I think, you know, like later tonight and into tomorrow morning is what the forecast was up here. So nothing yet, but we're under the clouds so all right we'll keep watching that um let's see well i was gonna go to the radar again uh on the bottom right hand side but it's empty right now i don't know why that is um so let's see if we can get a new calculation on how far away the center is from land uh those of you who are familiar with our live streams we do this every so often uh during whilst we're on the air calculating the distance and as of 10 past which is just over 10 minutes ago now the closest point on land was uh, 24 miles and that would be Wildwood New Jersey 24 miles um, northwest of the storm's center so Faye is 24 miles southeast of Wildwood New Jersey Strat. How about Atlantic City New Jersey I, th I think that's probably gonna be pretty Atlantic close City 42 well. miles yeah. yeah. I think regardless for both of those areas in particular, now, at least in terms of rainfall, we can say uh, with a very increasing level of certainty as more and more frames come in as the storm keeps moving, that the, the worst of the rainfall is over for both of those coastal areas and that they could still get some winds for a while, but they won't really have much uh, bark to bite them in terms of you know rainfall and thunderstorms anymore. 24 miles from land, that's pretty close. We were expecting, it looks to me, as though we might see landfall this afternoon when it could have been tomorrow morning, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's moved a bit faster than you would have assumed when it was, you know, initialized yesterday at 5 p.m. at moving north eight miles an hour. Um, but uh, it's picked up its pace a bit. I think it's at least 12 now is the last advisory, and I would be, you know, yeah. supposed to accelerate further. And that little jog to the west is, you know, going to make a difference by at least a few hours in landfall, it looks like. Because even if it's skirting the coast, it'll technically be inland. This sort of is already, really, with most of the action going I mean, on yeah, inland right now. Yeah, most of the action's in land already. You know, if this was a typical tropical cyclone, you'd be looking for, um, you know, very even spread around the center of the storm. And you'd have some of the impacts on land, but you'd see most of the convection still offshore. Uh, that's pretty much the opposite here with almost all the convection on shore already uh, and a bit of a flare-up occurring, you know, kind of just with a band way out to the east of the center. Uh, that If it sustains itself and keeps moving north, could impact, you know, uh, Long that's Island fair. and eastern Connecticut and Rhode Island later today. Yeah, but There is a uh, little band, but the western band is uh, quite nasty, actually, looking at that. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty sustained. Nice. That's arriving in New York City right now. Yeah, New York City in the next few hours or so. So next three to six hours is going to be the worst for New York City. Staten Island's starting to get the brunt of that, too. They'll be done a bit sooner than them. Of course. Um, and if anyone's concerned about that eastern band, because of the sea surface temperatures, it'll probably weaken as it continues to move north um, with the system or just detach and fizzle away completely. So it shouldn't be uh, too much of a really a major concern to worry about. What about the tornado threat? Because... Um... I heard the SPC is put a slight risk for Long Island. Strat? I mean, they're never ruled out, you know, but geographically, this isn't really the the best place for them to occur. Um, and, you know, also, there isn't really as much severe thunderstorms ongoing that could 
you know, mm. induce them right now with Faye. Although there is still, you know, obviously a slight risk for a, a really quick spin up to occur. You have a rotating storm, um, you know, with shear coming in. But most of the rotation, um, at least in terms of the, the you know, closest amount, um, compared to last night when it was still occurring within a lot of the convection is now a bit more focused with the actual center of the storm with the, you know, broader convection just rotating around it. Uh, so I'd say uh, not too likely, but you couldn't, you can't rule out the risk of an isolated event occurring. You know, uh, there isn't any severe thunderstorm warnings or watches in place for Long Island in that area right now. Uh, so I don't think you have to worry about it too much, but always stay on guard anyways and, you know, keep your uh, EAS systems ready to go. You got that tropical storm yeah, warning as well, of course. Yep. So Nathan, I've been seeing in the chat a bit, a bit of frequent questions about the chances of this becoming a hurricane. Is that pretty much at zero at this point? I would say so. <laughs> yeah, I would it, say it's, it's gotta be zero much because it's starting. It, okay. you know, uh, its winds might sustain itself a bit longer, but the uh, actual, you know, physical look of the storm's deteriorating, and that'll really prevent any other intensification combined with cooler sea surface temperatures and land interaction that are going to be ongoing, as long as, as well as just the general shear. Um, this thing looks probably, a, if you don't mind the cosmetic comparison, uh, a multitude worse than Barry of last year. And if that's our you know Ooh. guideline for what the absolute trashest storm can be Ooh. looking like to be a hurricane, <laughs> uh, we're significantly past it in terms of its ability to not do that. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Right, because a lot of the strengthening is going to be like Bear Clinic from here on out because sea surface temperatures aren't really going to be favorable uh, from this point forward. So, and due to its proximity to land, of course, I don't think we're going to see a hurricane out of this. No, yeah, that, that's basically, you know, it's, you know, it was surprised a little bit, some people getting to 60 miles an hour, but even a lot of that was Bear Clinic because by the time it did that, it was already starting to look, you know, less unified than it was even... Uh, 12 hours ago compared to now you're saying that in past uh, tense it is still 60 miles per hour don't remind me at its peak <laughs> intensity <laughs> right structure for a tropical cyclone uh even if it's kind of transitioning a bit towards that post-tropical side yeah um let's see if we can go back to one of the webcams isaac there's a road right now oh no there's also that same area we were looking at earlier uh, we were looking at some traffic cameras just before when you were off there. It looked a lot more blustery. Um, but along the coastline, there, these are places that have probably already experienced that worst band, the main part of the storm. There's a wild water right there. Yeah. There's a wild and cam off there. It looks somewhat calm there. You know, there's people going about their business, <laughs> um, cycling along there. Uh, yeah, it's park. pretty much... Go ahead. That's Seaside Park, and then this is uh, 11th Street in New Jersey. One of the loads. Uh, there it is. It's like another rain band going on in. Yeah. And there's people out on the boardwalk. I would like to note, as you know, broadcasters covering tropical cyclones, that uh, we would advise against going... Uh, to coastal areas and beaches uh, while you're, a tropical cyclone is nearby you, even if the worst of the rains are passed, particularly because, uh, you know, still in southern central New Jersey, heavier winds can still be around, and uh, especially near the water, rip currents, if you decide to really be reckless enough to go in the water, uh, are a very significant concern. So uh, just because you see a couple people out in these camps does not mean you should consider replicating their actions necessarily. A lot of rain being reported in Lower Manhattan, Strat. I would not be surprised. My brother is actually in um, Brooklyn right now, so uh, I'll probably call him back to this. He'll be complaining that I didn't tell him enough about this, maybe. <laughs> really? I wouldn't be surprised. I told him, dude, you got to have like, you know, some sort of Netflix show getting ready to watch for the weekend, but I don't know if he listened to me. Well, there is the picture in the uh, wider area. There are a good amount of questions we want to answer some yeah, of these right Yeah, let's just go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you'll, you might know this, Nathan, off the bat. If not, I think we can get it pretty quickly. Someone's asking, how high are the waves right now? The wave height associated with it. I have no idea. 
I think the... some of the models last night were indicating a peak wave height of around 12 feet. Uh, but that doesn't correlate to storm surge necessarily. You know, the peak surge that we're expecting is around 3 feet, which is pretty minimal. It can cause some erosion and only a major concern for very, very low-lying areas or if you have structures directly on the water. Um, so, you know, 12 feet was the expected wave height last night. I can't tell you exactly if that's come to fruition because I haven't seen uh, the reports on that today. But considering the, the general structure of the storm, I wouldn't be too surprised if something like that was coming true. Um, someone's asking, do you think it gets to 65 miles an hour, Nathan? It's got a chance, but it'd be a surprise. <laughs> Uh, I think the NHG is going to keep it at 60 miles an hour. The uh, recon aircraft haven't found anything above 61.3 miles an hour. Uh, the current eye temperature at the surface is 76.5 degrees, and flight level is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the minimum central pressure that was found in the recon was 998 millibars at sea level. Yeah, so unless they get something to contradict what's already been found to the upside, I don't think we'll see a further increase in the actual recorded strength on you know reports in general so that'd be 55 knots uh in general um for intensity quite unlikely but technically not impossible yet um someone's asking uh if the storm will be bad for areas above albany so that's more upstate new york yeah um you, there's some slight threat for you know minimal flash flooding because you know there's a wider area up in the upper state of new york and uh parts of new england that are expecting at one to two inches of rain some isolated of two to three um, so if you're unlucky and get under, you know, a heavy band that can blow up while, uh, it's over land, then maybe, uh, but overall, you know, once you get out of, you know, a bit north of White Plains and, you know, kind of the Westchester County area, walk Rochester area of New York and, uh, Connecticut and, uh, parts of Massachusetts, Western Massachusetts, you're not going to be seeing too much of a direct threat, uh, other than just a bit of a rainy day and some gusty winds. And for any Canadian viewers that are concerned at all, it's probably going to be the same thing up there as well. I would note, and I don't know if this will actually come to fruition at all, um, just because uh, it's a 12-hour time slot between the two because of how quickly the storm might end up moving as we get to 24 to 36 hours. The National Hurricane Center current forecast cone has this as a tropical system in Canada. Do you want to show us that, if possible? Yeah, here, let me get a quick screenshot of this up. Uh, just the NHC cone. They show this as a tropical cyclone. Isaac's got it already. Oh, he's got oh, okay. He's right, quick. Get it, get it he's quick. Yeah, Isaac. So there's the latest yeah. forecast cone. Is but, that up to date? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, this is the 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Intermediate. Oh, yeah, so that, that's come out early. Yeah. No, it's So uh, they have it at 60 miles an hour, 998 meters intermediate. Still going north at 12 miles an hour. So... Uh, you know, the story hasn't really changed much in terms of that. But one millibar lower. Wow, getting stronger, guys. Stay on guard. <laughs> yeah, hold but on millibar as lower. Shows, as Isaac's image shows, that is a tropical depression in Canada, according to the National Hurricane Center. What models have been showing, though, especially mesoscale, is that the pressure will continue to drop as it moves inland, as it moves north, and mainly because it's growing in size. It's not really growing in strength. Uh, right. And um, going back to what uh, Strat said earlier about uh, the sea surface temperature and Nathan, if you look uh, with the dry air on a satellite, you can also see that uh, some dry air is actually wrapping itself around the center, which will further heave from uh, its strengthening. Right, that's one thing we haven't looked at today so far. Yeah, you know, it's like, like you're saying right there, and that's fully correct. It isn't just sheer displacing convection away from the center of the storm. But there's also dry air wrapped into the center as well. Uh, that's, you know, preventing convection from even really blowing up much around the center other than uh, a swirl of clouds and maybe a, a little bit of rain. So that goes to the question of someone asking uh, if it's possible for direct landfall in Atlantic City. That's actually, you know, not outside of the realm of possibility. If it moves straight oh, yeah. north, it gets get pretty close to a landfall there. Absolutely uh, but even a if possibility. It does, yeah, but even if it does, the worst impacts are probably past Atlantic City already already you know? yeah this is the point yeah. landfalls people make a huge fuss over landfalls but the symbolic if nothing else but really Especially the effects of like the this. storm have gone 
Yeah, right. you know, especially because the southwestern quadrant has no tropical storm force winds as of the, the latest recording still. So by the time a landfall occurs in New Jersey, wherever that happens, tropical storm force winds already won't be occurring anymore. You could still potentially that's why, have That's why you always stuff. read the fine print that says there's no <laughs> tropical storm conditions on the southern yeah. side. Yeah. So, like, you know, keep, keep in mind, the center of the storm is still about the latitude of... Uh, southern new jersey the southern tip uh, right now yeah yeah but the actual worst effects of the storm right now are up at the latitude of northern new jersey long island uh staten island and parts of pennsylvania um you know the worst that's happening in you know southeastern new jersey now is just uh some stronger winds with a bit elevated gusts you know the rainfall is mostly over there now although you know s slight surge you know uh current threat in general remains so just because you're not seeing wind in the heaviest or heaviest winds and rain anymore doesn't mean that if you're in that particular area that you should be deciding this is a great time to go out to the beach and see what the waves are like either. Right. right. And going back to um and right and going back to um last night there, um you may have you may have noticed that the warning area expanded further south. Um because the so, well, intermediate virus is mentioning two interest interesting things. Firstly, um in Lewis, Delaware, that they've reported sustained wind of 41 miles an hour, and in was for gusts of 53, and in Seaside, Hudson, Jersey, a 37 miles an hour sustained gust of 46. So it was hammering Delaware, an area that originally wasn't in that severe thunderstorm warning, and now is that warning. So as a fact, the tropical storm force warning is now in effect from where. From Fenwick Island, Delaware, to Wacho, Rhode Island, including Long Island Sound and Long Island, and Southern Delaware Bay as a result. Yeah, that happened much earlier this yeah. morning. At what time was, was that? Like, was that the 8 a.m. advisory? The that the National Hurricane Center um, realized that tropical storm conditions were occurring along the coast further south than where the warning area was, and they thought, oh dear. So <laughs> they uh, extended the warning zone. Yeah, and that's why recon's important. They wouldn't have really noticed that, uh, I mean, until it already got on land with ground observations, if it wasn't for recon. You know, no, they did. They, the it, was a, it was a ground observation. <laughs> oh, that's what made them do it. I thought it was recon, too, because I was, you know, I was a bit no, groggy. No, ground when observations I woke up were 34 it. knots at the time sustained. Oh, yeah, I was a bit groggy when I woke up this morning to get that storm update out at 9 a.m. But yeah. when I came out, oh, they extended the warning further south. There's winds on the northwestern quadrant. Uh, but to note on that, that's the northwestern quadrant. So by the time the storm makes landfall, the fact that there's no sustained tropical storm force winds on the southwestern quadrant means that anything at the landfall location or south will already have their tropical storm force winds behind them. You know, and that's one of the interesting things about this, like some of the strongest winds are actually kind of displaced from the main convection of the storm, which is more on the north and west side. But the strongest winds are probably still occurring a bit offshore to the south and east of um, New York and, and New Jersey at this time. Elliot, uh, you may as well pick it up at this point because we've got your screen working. <laughs> so rain up through northern New Jersey um, into New York City. And with that, you've got quite a few flash flood warnings, including downtown New York, as well as quite a few um, parts of New Jersey like Trenton, Edison, East Brunswick. Uh, Long Branch and Lakewood, and Tom's River, you've got quite a few uh, flash flood warnings up. So if are you're we, in those areas... Right now, are we look. is this a uh, one-hour rain total? Yep, this would be one-hour rain totals. Um, and if we turn to look at... Um, if we turn to look at reflectivity, you can sort of see that um, areas like Edison, East Brunswick... Yep. East Brunswick, you're sort of seeing just the getting out there now yeah yeah if you're in areas like edison downtown new york and up through um wayne and dover you can sort of see that the rain is not over so you guys can expect to see some pretty heavy rainfall for the next couple hours so keep an eye out for that and that's where the main threat of those flash flooding concerns that we're talking about last night and today are you know you have these bands that'll come in and even if they aren't having uh, all the peak winds or thunder and lightning or tornado threats, those really heavy rains that come in with totals of one to two inches within an hour is when you can see flash flooding become a concern for localized areas. And right now, as 
uh, Elliot rightfully said, we do have some flash floods warnings in effect right now. I think those came in just within the past uh, 15 minutes or so, actually. Ten minutes ago, ten minutes ago, for Hudson, Eastern Passaic, Union, Southeastern Bergen, and Nexus County, all in northeastern New Jersey, and the five boroughs. Yep, so... Now we got some flash flood warnings in effect from these one of these heavier wow. bands coming on shore. Um, I can imagine the, all the uh, little pigeons in New York City taking a swim down the the little waterfalls <laughs> that are coming in right now. I have a uh, live camera from uh, northern New Jersey, the extreme northern tip of New Jersey. I believe this is actually from Woodward, uh, a traffic camera from Let's there see if we on can my get screen. This. Uh, we're getting there. So this is right now. Nice live mm -hmm. view there. This is off of uh, one of the oh, interstates there in Woodbridge. Blustery to say the least. We are driving way too quickly in this rain. <laughs> so wh where exactly yeah. is that? This is, um... No, I'm, I'm not really too familiar with the geography there, but I believe it's on the bridge between uh, Woodbridge and Elizabeth. Um, so this, this is northern New Jersey, right? Yeah, extreme it's northern New bridge, Jersey. Like it? the order. Yeah. I believe so, but it's like the yeah. border between uh, New Jersey and New York. Yeah, so uh, I guess this goes to the point to while we'd advise everyone watching not to do this particularly, <laughs> uh, dr you know, driving on a highway during a, a tropical storm warning during the actual worst of the storm for that particular region. There's a lot uh, of people that, doing it, Strat. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, why I'd advise not to do that because it's not particularly safe. It also shows that, you know, when you see, you know, titles and thumbnails of articles and other videos and stuff saying, you know, major impacts coming, this is a major tropical cyclone, that, you know, that isn't necessarily true, and it's kind of more uh, towards the fanaticism side, side of things. Sure, this is a tropical cyclone, but, you know, the impacts are pretty typical. <laughs> You're getting for waves of slow drivers and some really quick ones there going by. <laughs> you see some of them going like 30 or 40, and the other ones are zooming by like 60. <laughs> then you see the brake lights. <laughs> yeah. But it, it does, time it till reaffirm. something bad happens. It does reaffirm the general point, you know, uh, you know, it's a tropical storm. Take, you know, you should take it seriously. But if you see people saying, "Oh, these are going to be uh, major impacts for a region that deals with storms similar or stronger than this," at least a few times a year, just not tropical in nature, that it isn't really truthful. You know, a lot of the excitement around this system as well. It's the first fully tropical cyclone to make a potential landfall. Uh, in southern New England, well, not potential, it likely will in the next couple hours now, uh, in almost a decade. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be, you know, a, you know, super devastating, you know, multi-billion-dollar damage storm. You know. Uh, the NHG has had their update, and the, uh, they have the center or expected landfall just north of Atlantic City. Mm. Uh, they, like expected, they have dropped the pressure down to 998 millibars, and they are keeping the uh, maximum sustained winds at, uh, hold on, maximum sustained winds for this, 60, 60 miles per hour. Yeah, 60. Yeah. It so is located. Asking about Atlantic City landfall, you could end up being proven correct. Um, I'm pretty sure from there on out, their cone and ours as well indicates basically, um, you know, skirting along the coastline of New Jersey and then into, uh, the center could actually still move over New York City and then up towards uh, New England and into Canada eventually. Yep, so uh, again, we're looking at the radar imagery here and the uh, latest position of the storm drawing slightly closer by the minute to land. And at this very moment, it is now 22 and a half miles offshore as of 36 minutes past, so that's nine minutes ago. So that would be a... It is slightly east of north, the latest movement, but these are very quick jogs that are currently going on, so it's bounced off north-northeast now, and it may curve back around to the west again later. Yeah, and I know we've spent basically the whole stream so far talking about um, Faye, but... There is actually another system act if we want to mention that briefly. Do we really oh. want to talk people about Christina? About I, I, about know, I, I know they were. I'm very surprised. 
Yeah, but you know, it is a tropical system. I guess we could give it a couple minutes and then maybe take a look at some of the model runs as well, just because. Well, uh, I've got I've got this from last cool. night. I don't know if this is still up to date or not. Is this still from last night? That's from last night, isn't I gotta it? Oh. Well, that's how I mean, Christina looked yesterday. I don't know if you've got, got any new got imagery. Principle. It looks pretty similar on my end. and kind of an eye feature that's mostly a Oh, I see it. Else. Yes, this is from Isaac. That's how it's looking today. It's sort of pretending to have an eye. Yeah, this one's moving than... harmlessly out to sea. And now not expected to become a hurricane anymore. So we've had a, a a bit of a, I guess, a letdown if you're looking for your first hurricane of the year in the Western Hemisphere. It's not happening quite <laughs> yet anymore. It could, have, it could have been the first. Up. It had the chance to become a major because at one point the National Hurricane Center had a peak in as a hundred uh 10 miles per hour, but uh, after that point, the structure kind of just decreated to where it is now. Yeah, they're saying they're expecting a peak basically There's been a lot of right overestimates now. so far in the Eastern Pacific. <laughs> yeah. Pacific in general has been dead this year. It's dreadful. Will we ever get a hurricane this year? Who knows? <sighs> I imagine yeah. so. It's from all of this that... energy to the Atlantic. It, it is good to reiterate, though, you know, we're talking about the lack of hurricane activity. I know there's a lot of, you know, excitement or hype around Faye being the earliest six-name storm um, rec in recorded history for the Atlantic Basin, beating the fifth-name storm of 2005 and 2006 as well. Well, it is justified um, hype. Um, well, I, I, would say just, I would say it's unjustified hype, you know. I guess, you know, people are... Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going on to say, if, if it was Devon in this room right now, he'd say that this is called Bertha. And because he didn't recognize it after the other storms. But, you know, I'm, I'm as critical as the next person to come along. And I think all six of these systems have been legitimately named. Oh, no, I don't, I don't disagree with that. By any means. You know, I'm just saying, you know, um, while all the formations have you know happened really early so far, uh, that, you know, they've all been subtropical region storms other than Cristobal, which came from a gyre in the eastern Pacific. And I've been relatively weak um you know we haven't had a hurricane yet through these first six storms and unless this does a pure miracle which it almost certainly won't uh that will stay like that uh but you know a lot of people are saying oh 2005 v2 2005 v2 we could get a lot of named storms this year we're really predicting that you know 21 named storms was our last prediction that is a lot um but if you want to compare this to 2005 um the first five storms then uh, were two major hurricanes, including a Category 5 and a Category 4, and a third hurricane as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure the combined ace for the first five storms there was over 50. I don't, I don't think know. It would be a lot I more than this year. Ten yet here. Um, so the, the comparisons between the two uh, years in terms of that are, aren't really warranted just because the, you know, the, the energy and strength of the systems early season are different. You know, the 2005 had a lot of MDR storms, uh, you know, from waves in the main development region, uh, out in the open Atlantic, you know, or in the Caribbean, kind of coming into the Gulf, while uh, all of these have been storms that have formed more in the subtropics in the northern Atlantic region, uh, and then Cristobal in the Gulf of Mexico, stemming from an eastern Pacific system originally. So there are pretty significant differences still, um, and that's why you don't really want to get from and compared between the two although the excitement is warranted you know there's a lot of name storms happening really quick and just just because we're having uh weak tropical storms uh during this time time in the hurricane season doesn't mean we're not going to see uh any majors down the line i mean just look at uh, 2004 um i think it didn't really get going until i think uh, mid-august or something like that if i remember correctly mm. and after that it just took off for about two months or so in poor florida got hammered a lot during that season so just because early august we're getting weak storms right now or early august wow yeah <laughs> so just so, because yeah. we're getting weak storms now doesn't mean you need to necessarily let your guard 1992 is a clear example of that with andrew <laughs> that's the one everyone yeah. goes to and, but uh and 2019 by the way well no yeah. then again there was imelda uh but 2011 uh you know the, the first hurricane was irene all the others were tropical storms yeah. And you can even make a statement, you know, for people that are more into tropical cyclones in the very recent years, if you want, a, a, not the best example, but a, a decent one nonetheless, you can even use 2017. The first five storms were all 
uh, weak tropical storms, and everyone's like, oh, this season has to be a dub because of that. And then you have a mm. massive string of yeah. really strong storms. So you That was know, more unexpected, though, than like, this year. Yeah, that's fair. Like that uh, but, you know, the, the point stands that even though you have these early weaker storms, uh, it doesn't mean you should throw out and just assume everything's going to be fine down the road. Um, I don't think they... many people are assuming that, honestly, this year. Right. No, not anymore. Even so, you just really have to take each storm as it comes. Prepare, um, if you have just a single storm, it's a good idea to prepare for that storm and not to focus on what the rest of the season's like if you're in its path at that point. I mean, think oh, wow. about it. How many major hurricanes can we actually name from July anyway? Not many. No. Emily. Yeah, keep going. Can you think uh, of any more? <laughs> Who? Dennis in July or was that in June? Dennis was July. Got it right. Let's go. All right, so that's two in the same year. But apart from that, you're struggling a little bit. Major hurricanes no. in July. Major hurricanes. I don't know. I don't remember any so of those. I'm just pointing out how rare it is and how we've really not seen anything yet this year. Yeah, I mean the strongest storm this year that uh, we've really had are all out in the eastern hemisphere. We had Harold and Ampon so far. So. Uh, we still haven't yeah. actually had a hurricane strength system in the Western Hemisphere this year yet. Some people a couple of minutes ago in the chat were saying that Faye looks like a hurricane, and I um, think you're right. I think this is 100% a tropical storm, everybody, and it will remain that. <laughs> yeah, Expose Why Center. Why not the comment section? I don't get it. It was like 10 minutes ago, but they were like saying that this really looks like a hurricane. It looks nothing like a hurricane. Agreed. That swirl in the middle. Yeah, it does look... have that. <laughs> it has a but... swirl in the middle, but that's indicative of a heavily sheared system or one that has a lot of dry air wrapped into it. That is not indicative of a, uh, you know, a storm strong enough well, to be represented as a hurricane. All you have to right. do there is uh, take a look at those numbers. I'll uh, just take the um, radar overlay off for a little minute if I can get to it. Um. And you might be able to see the numbers a bit better. That's probably made it worse, actually. Are um, sustained, by the way? Just to, just for these are sustained yeah. winds in knots. Okay. So 34 is the magic number for tropical storm force winds. We had a few 34s earlier. Right now, the latest there, there's a 33 near the center of the storm Atlantic City. 33, Strap. Um, yeah, I think there's a 36 coming up a little bit before that as well. So it's kind of oscillating on the edge there. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think all stations are listed on this view. Uh, they are on the closer view. I'm seeing yeah. 1520s um, south shore of Long Island from that radar yeah. view. So, you know, it's up towards, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York City right now. Winds are going to continue to pick up for a few more hours, potentially get up to uh, tropical storm status or... Uh, you know, bit above it, bit below it, depending on the actual strength of, of the system as a whole. By the time uh, mm. all that main source of energy moves through there, New York um, City had a 25 knot wind there. Yeah, I mean they're they're going through the strongest rain bands right now. But you know, looking at the system and where its actual wind field is, that isn't necessarily indicative of the strongest wind radii right now. Which the the general strongest tropical storm force winds are the largest chunk of it is still offshore of New Jersey because it's the north and east of the center. Um, so later tonight um, and this evening, when there isn't really as much rain, uh, if the system moves you know far enough west, uh, that's when you know New York City, Long Island, uh, parts of Connecticut could get tropical storm force winds if it holds its intensity enough. If you know if it weakens too quickly, then that obviously won't happen. Uh, but the strongest winds aren't really necessarily attached with the the strongest convection right now associated with the system. I heard in the comment section of then Hempstead there's a 45 mile per hour gust. Could be a gust, yeah. It's, that's definitely possible. Easily. They have tropical storm force gusts on land right now for sure. Uh, someone's asking, how close is Faye to landfall? Yeah, uh, I was just going to ask the same question of you. <laughs> how close do you I think mean, it is to landfall right now? Based on its current track, um, probably within the, you know, five to ten hour range depending on oscillation stuff like that you know if it comes on shore uh in it right around atlantic city and skirts up the coastline uh it could be in land for you know uh six hours maybe even before reaching new york 
uh, or it could try to barely stay offshore and then make no landfall um, for almost, you know, 15 hours or something still, 12 to 15, uh, if you get uh, unlucky in terms of the storm not making landfall sooner than that. Uh, but regardless, like we said, a lot of the worst impacts are to the north of the center. So anything at or south is really more devoid. So, you know, once the landfall occurs, wherever you are, really, you are well past the worst of the storm and you're going to get better and better from there on out. Um, yep. I think it's important to reiterate that because, you know, you always have ch viewers coming in and out again and again as we keep talking and stuff like that. Uh, so the worst impacts are, you know, central and northern Jersey starting to reach into New York City and then uh, Long Island and southern Connecticut right now. Uh, you're not really going to deal with uh, too much once you're past the actual latitude of where the storm is itself. Also joining us now and sharing their screen is Ethan, showing us this radar loop right now. Yep, as you can see, we've got quite a large area of rain bands extending north. Roughly right down here is the center of circulation. We have a large rain band extending all the way up to parts of Connecticut even. The smaller one extending down here. Right now we're seeing the highest amounts of rainfall. Um, just south of the Delaware, New Jersey area. So probably seeing some flash flooding there. In these green boxes, there are flash flood warnings in effect, including Philadelphia, New York City, and portions south of New York City as well. Yep, lots of flash flood warnings out there right now, and we're looking at rain rates of uh, a good inch per hour in the main part of the storm there. Yeah, we were seeing some rain rates of up to two inches now, um, two inches per hour earlier. Don't know if those have stayed that high, but still, flash flooding is going to be a concern for this. And as the rain pushes northward, you sort of see it pushing out of Philadelphia now, moving through the New York region. Eventually, it'll probably go to um, get to Allentown's um, Bridgeport, might see some later. Um, but yeah, uh, rainfall is going to be some... moderate. I've heard water rescues are... Hmm. I've heard that some water rescues are ongoing in the flash flood warning in northern parts of Delaware. So that's something to... Could you just repeat up. where that was? Up there. We're struggling with Ethan's signal. Oh, and I yeah, believe I that um, the beginning of Delaware. Delaware. They are yeah, coming I mean, into my area now. It's starting to rain here. Strat, yeah. how about your place? Uh, my lot webcam is showing the same thing it was for the most part of the stream. <laughs> uh, some drizzles and a bit of heavy rain here and there. Uh, generally gusty winds, you know, probably sustained closer to. Uh, maybe 10 to 15 knots with some gusts higher, but I could just go out in my backyard right now and cook myself a hot dog no problem if I really wanted to unless it started pouring on me. No squirrels out there today? Um, You know, they're probably uh, up in their, inside their trees making sure they're all safe and stuff right now, you know? I'm sure they are. All right, Um, so this is Force 13 Live. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to go from here. We've not scheduled anything. We're just going to stay on the air for the moment. As we continue to track Tropical Storm Fay, which is only about 23 miles offshore, 22 miles off the coast of southern New Jersey. If you've got any questions for us live, send them in. Start your message with Force 13, all in text in the YouTube chat. And uh, we'll be able to, hopefully, respond in a timely fashion. Although we can't always guarantee it with the amount of comments that come in every so often. Nah, but we can try our best. Uh, you you sure do. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. But uh, if, if anyone's got reports on the ground as well from where you are at this moment, then uh, we'd love to hear from you in that regard as well. I'm in New Hampshire right now with my grandparents, and it's not really eventful here, just seeing a few high clouds at this point. But yeah, it might come I to us later. I actually know you were tomorrow. there at this moment. <laughs> Yeah, just going up there to visit my grandparents. But yeah, we're just seeing some high clouds here. No precipitation. Winds are light. Nothing much to speak of. Yeah, you know, like we've talked about a lot, you know, through the better part of the uh, 
past 24 hours now uh, is that, you know, a lot of the treatment of how you're, you know, preparing for this should be similar to how you just prepare for a normal nor'easter, which is just making sure you're responsible, um, you know, you're not doing anything reckless like going outside um, to, you know, dangerous areas where flooding are possible for no good reason, um, you know, especially, you know, beaches and other coastal areas hmm. like that. Uh, and just, you know, other than that, you know, with the nor'easter, at least for us here in the northeast, we don't typically have to do too much other than just uh, be responsible. If you're in a more low-lying area, then you might have to take some extra preparations, including sandbags, stuff like that, especially with a, a light storm surge, you know, that could be happening, general flash flooding as well. Um, but compared to a lot of things we've dealt with before, uh, this is pretty similar to that. So I, there's a lot more sensationalism because it's tropical, but you know, <laughs> we're, we're able to deal with a storm like this. Or, well, or, or there's tons here. of questions now. When are they launching another recon aircraft? Let me find that out. Michael, do you know? Not sure. I mean, Ethan, Ethan's looking for it real quick. Just I know they canceled one, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure uh, when the next one's coming um, out exactly. Recon. I believe they're, I believe, uh, like what Strat was saying earlier, I believe they're done with recon for the system. Unless it stays offshore and kind of just skirts the coastline. Uh, for, no, for uh, for Faye. Uh, yeah, unless like, it just, so good. The finish. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure they're done. Unless it maybe skirts the coastline, like Strat said the possibility, they yeah. might uh, send another recon plane in. But if it makes landfall within the next... If it makes landfall by 5 p.m., which is unlikely, but if it does, they'll just recon stun with the storm for good. Yeah, I think the main yeah. issue you know, with sending other plane is all the planes that are taking off to go into the storm, they're landing them and taking them off from down, like, in the pretty deep south. And this storm's up towards, you know, New Jersey already. So if they were to even take one off right now, by the time it got to the center of the storm, it could already be, um, you know, pretty close to being inland or already inland. And then they can't do the drop zones or other things that they really take the recon planes in to do. Uh, which basically makes the point of sending it out useless. So, um, I got the recon uh, front of the day on my screen here. It's all good. And the problem is uh, with recon is it's well, the recon that's been going to this storm is for the Air Force, and they're kind of they're kind of a little bit uh, secretive about the uh, about their schedule. It's not like you know the NHC where they kind of oh they're, we're going to let you know what we're going to do for the day. That uh, Air Force isn't really much like that. So it's really hard to predict when the next recon plane is going to take off until it's already in the air. Yeah, I, and I mean, fortunately, we're able to get all that live data whenever they're in the air, thanks to, you know, a lot of different sources. But, you know, you're fully right to say oftentimes it's harder to find out exactly when uh, a storm will be, you know, taken off to uh, all right. get into the air uh, or a plane to take off to get into the air to go to a storm until it's already up and rolling. We've got a lot more comments to go through. Uh, here's a question. Will we have to go to the Greek alphabet? Now, um, that's a question that often sparks a lot of laughter, but honestly, it's a toss-up right now as to whether that's going to happen or not, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if you keep seeing a lot the of these... this is going. I mean, if you keep seeing a lot of these little storms come from the subtropics, um, it becomes, you know, more and more likely just statistically. You know, if you want to... I said this last and I'll reiterate it now just because this is you know, a lot of ways how the Atlantic works. If you want a lot of strong storms coming in, you know, you want, you would want to see them forming, you know, in the main development region, out in the open southern Atlantic where the waves come and form in the eastern Caribbean or in the western Caribbean, um, you know. But if you want to see the storm totals get pushed up, so if you want to see just a extreme number for no good reason, that's when the subtropics really come into play. You need to see a lot of activity forming from these non-tropical systems that come off of the United States or cut off lows that form uh, from, you know, other low pressure areas that used to exist to really push that total up um, to get to a really high number. And so far for 2020, we've seen a really large amount of uh, activity in the subtropics. Um, five of the six formations have occurred, you know, north of the main development region of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so knowing that so far, if that trend continues, then you're going to see increased odds of getting up to those potential Greek letters. But, you know, we can't really say uh, yes or no. Like Nathan said, it's more of a coin flip. It'd be irresponsible of us to say, oh, yes, this is definitely going to happen exactly like that. All right. Um, that's a very long response. Um, gusts of 45 miles per hour recorded by Gaming Boss at Hempstead, New York. I wouldn't be surprised. I think. I do appreciate the reporting on the chat. Very kind. 
Yeah, um, chances for Category 1 status, we said pretty much zero, didn't we? Yeah. You, you yeah. Will the M curse be resurrected and Marco be a Cat 5? <laughs> I can't predict that. Pro hopefully not. Um, yeah. You never really want a storm to just go out and be a Cat 5 necessarily in the Atlantic because no. unlike the Eastern Pacific, for example, uh, yeah. you know, if a storm's getting really strong and it has a time of water, uh, there's a higher chance of it impacting land compared, you know, rather than uh, unless it's, you know, like a 2010 and all of them just recurve out to see like absolute fish storms. Uh, so we'd hope not, but uh, we can't really say anything about specific name storms when they haven't even happened yet. Is there a possibility of a hurricane similar to Bob or Irene forming and striking New York, Long Island later in the season? Can't rule it out. Bob occurred know. in August. Irene occurred in late August. Uh, many other storms have struck in August, September, October even, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, if you see a similar steering current, uh, you know, late next month, and, you know, the system, for, you know, a tropical wave manages to come a bit further north and uh, goes a bit north of the Bahamas or, you know, starts in the Caribbean and is able to just get shoved north and then it can't really get pushed out to sea. Because <clears throat> high pressures blocking it or low pressures trying to suck it into the northeast coast hypothetically yeah it's possible but you know it we can't possible. say yes or no when it isn't really uh on the radar in the very near future Someone brought up, what is your opinion on the area of interest near the azores yeah um i think there is definitely a possibility but i but the answer to me, you know, I'll be honest, is and I don't know. We have, I have just, have, I have absolutely no idea if this is going to happen or not. <laughs> like, like, who knows? Well, that's great commentary. <laughs> who <laughs> knows is the answer. <laughs> but the, that really is the answer if we're talking about anything beyond a week's time, honestly. Um, someone who claims to know the answer is at best guessing. Um, that's still the way it is in the world of weather at the moment. Um, chances of more storm formation in July on that same topic of predicting things. Well, uh, GFS and maybe one or two other models hinting that there could be a, a weak depression near the Azores, and that's what you were alluding to earlier, Rain, in that question. Um, 20% on that one that we've given it. I still don't think the National Hurricane Center has recognized it, have they? they no, they haven't. Uh, not on their 2 p.m. one yet. You know, maybe in a day they will briefly, uh, but it isn't. It could become a weak depression briefly, but it's not too likely. And other than that, the long-term models are showing nothing uh, for you know at least the next uh, 10 days after that. Uh, so I think we're mostly in the clear after this for a while. But at the same time, I will note, unfortunately, all these. A lot, a few of these storms that have formed, uh, you know, relatively quickly in the subtropics have had very little model support until like right before their formation, or in some cases not at all. If we're talking about Edward, <laughs> mm. but uh, so you know, uh, can't say that there necessarily won't be any more activity in July, uh, but at the same time, uh, long-term models are indicating that we might finally see another period of quiet come into the basin for a bit. Faye is drifting ever... Well, you said that, by the way, after Cristobal. <laughs> Wait, we had a couple weeks. We had a couple weeks. I suppose. Um, as for Faye, though, it is drifting towards the coastline very slowly, at least as we're watching it. It's now 20 miles off the coast, and the closest point of land is at Avalon, New Jersey. That's 20 miles from the center of the storm to the northwest. And Isaac's looking at more traffic cameras. Or was for a minute there. What? Do we oh, get no, some speed demons going on in the rain? There they go again. <laughs> it's just buffering <laughs> for the, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, man, they're booking it. They're booking it. Mm, I'll give them credit for that. The, uh, it's, it depends how zoomed in that camera is. It's hard to tell. But yeah, it's uh, pretty buffering good, yeah. a lot. Uh, I mean, while we're looking at it, there's a couple other questions real quick. Um, did Faye already make landfall? No, not as a tropical system, at least. It is an invest on the Gulf and Coast. And some like people will be forgiven for thinking that it has, because you look at the uh, radar alone, especially when we go into this graphic, you, you'd say there, well, 
it's hard to tell whether it's made landfall or not looking at just radar imagery without looking at the visible because there isn't really any rain falling at the center of the storm that is a hundred percent correct um but it hasn't made landfall yet it probably will within the next six to twelve hours though um along the 20 miles the all it takes is at, at the speed this system's moving you know the um eccentricness eccentricity rather of the storm's center of circulation you know it could make landfall in, in the next hour probably won't but yeah it, it would could. need a big yoink it would do that it would but it might just yeah. happen you never know and, and another question is, is there a chance it won't even make landfall? Um, to answer that... What at you'd all? Probably, <laughs> um, you'd probably need something unprecedented uh, that we haven't ever seen in meteorological history for at least a very long time recorded history for this thing not to make landfall. Um, the worst deviation it can make to the east would probably bring it to the western part of Long Island for a landfall at this point. Um, you know, to just give all honesty on that. It, it uh, could, I mean, it, it would be... It would be some kind of freak of nature for it to not make landfall in New Jersey at this point, the way it's going. But that still yeah. could happen. One or two models did suggest that earlier today, but not at the moment. Um, earlier models yeah. suggested that it was going to go through Long Island or through New York, but it does appear at this point that it will be tracking through central and northern New Jersey inland. Uh, but in general, though, uh, there is a high-pressure system that's going to you know, keep this mostly on a northward course for the next 24 hours or so. So <laughs> I would give it you know, less than a, a thousandth of 1% that this somehow turns out to see. Which, <laughs> which, to, which You're to just grabbing that number from anywhere, aren't you? Yeah, to, which to paraphrase means, no, it will make landfall. Um, to, to answer that question. But, I mean, regardless of where it makes landfall, it doesn't really matter too much because of the fact, as we've talked about multiple times, that the worst of the storm is pretty disassociated to the north, and uh, at least for the convection, to the north and the northwest, and the winds to the north and northeast a bit right now. Uh, so by the time the center of the storm makes landfall, wherever that landfall is, the worst of the conditions will be more than gone. A lot more questions... Some more vague than others. Is this a sign of worse to come? <laughs> I would say um, maybe not. Probably not, but it's always good to be prepared. This is predicted to be an active season, so um, early season doesn't really matter that much in terms of what kind of storms you'd see in the late season, but um, it's always going to be good to keep an eye out. And uh, if you know that something is going to come towards your area just be prepared for that and yeah absolutely should we recap yeah. where those flash flood warnings are right now sure, uh, yeah, sure. You, you got them elliot i got them um, Fire. there's one um that's over new york the um the big apple um there's several over um northern new jersey um one in edison east brunswick long branch Another one extending from Trenton to near Lakewood, and another one um, in like sort of the central coast of New Jersey from like Tom's River down to Ocean Acres and a little further south than that. And then there's one extending from Philadelphia down to Wilmington and some parts of northern Delaware, it seems. So yeah, you've got quite a few areas that have experienced some flooding rainfall, so... Just keep an eye out for that as we head into the day. Those are going to extend um, further north and further west, most likely. And flooding rainfall is going to be the primary threat from here on out. So just going to be something to keep an eye on. Yep. Absolutely. Um, would, you, would you like me to do it for counties, or is that good enough? What was that? Uh, for fast flood warning, the counties specifically? If there's any that have been missed by that just there, I don't know. All right, let me bring down the county list one more time. So, Upton has put up a flash for warning for Hudson, Chimpasaic, Union, Southeastern Bergen, Exus, and the five boroughs, which is Queens, Richmond, yep. with Staten Island, Bronx, Kings, and Manhattan. Um, Mount Holly has put down two fast flood warnings, one for Somerset, Northeastern Monument, and Mims Sex until 515, and another for Northeastern Ocean, Mercer, 
itself in Somerset, Monmouth County, and southwestern Middlesex County until 445. Eastern time. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of those areas, the worst of the, you know, rainfall will probably be gone within the next uh, three hours or so at most, based on how, you know, the convection continuing to move. It and looks like it's already, it's like half of it's already gone through New York, yeah. but there's another little area coming up now. Yeah, I mean, if you're just looking at, you know, infrared as a whole, the main area of, you know, convection where you have minus 30 cloud tops onward, where you're going to see the, the, you know, heavier rainfall occur. That's already starting to approach the end of the, the the current main surge of convection for you know Staten Island, and unless you see another flare up, uh, you know just offshore that comes onshore, which you know considering we're already over cooler sea surface temperatures, wouldn't be too likely. Um, the worst of at least rainfall uh, will probably be over for several of these areas in the pretty near future. Actually, uh, wind is going to be a bit of another matter, though. You be as large of a direct threat because you know uh, you know minimal tropical storm force winds. Uh, uh, with some higher gusts will obviously be, you know, some concern, but nothing too major. Uh, those are actually a bit disassociated with some of the convection that's going on over land already. And the worst of those uh, will probably come on shore in some of these areas uh, like Long Island, New York, uh, up into southeastern New England or southwestern New England. I'm sorry. Um, after the worst of the rainfall is gone as well uh, for people that are uh, in those areas and curious about that. So you're going to have a bit of a, a, a double wave effect in terms of certain types of impacts but once you get through the rainfall part um you're basically you know going to be through the worst of it all you got to do is just be responsible uh don't be reckless and go to the beach for no good reason right now just because you want to uh see some waves and put yourself at risk for you know not really a good reason yep um still looking at the imagery here Sorry, I've been quite distracted, actually. But if you do have any further comments or questions, send them in. Um, we can answer them live on the air. Have there been any more, Strat? Uh, there's a couple of questions right now. Someone's asking, uh, 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 will North Jersey get a very bad part of the storm, like flooding and strong winds? I think like we've been talking mm. about, the, the worst of it for North Jersey it's is right, right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right uh, now. You, might, you guys might get some stronger winds later on today, uh, into the evening and into the night. Uh, but the worst of the rainfall and, and flash flooding threat for northern New Jersey is occurring right now. Um, uh, just for people to keep that in mind if they're up there in that particular region. Uh, let's see. We've got other questions coming up. Oh, There's actually some questions. This is a bit off topic. There's some questions about the animations <laughs> if you want to answer. Really? really? Yeah. Uh, someone's asking, uh, when would the animation be out uh, for, I guess, this storm? And, um, what, like, probably when it's over, right? <laughs> Yeah, when it's over, not right now, definitely. <laughs> so give it, give it at least a few days. Wait for this thing to dissipate first, then then ask us again in the uh, the comments section of one of our videos. Oh, I you're probably talking over a week. Yeah, because I mean, to, to be fair to this, you know, as a tropical cyclone, you know, the latest forecast uh, still have it as another, you know, potentially up to thirty six hours. Although, uh, looking at it, if it gets way too detached from its convection, it could happen. Uh, sooner rather than later, uh, to be honest. But that doesn't really change the threats that people are going to be experiencing from this storm. And, you know, a, a note of, because of protocol is that at this point, let's say the system became fully post-tropical at 5 p.m., which it's not going to. Uh, you'd still see tropical storm warnings in effect for these regions until the storm passed uh, oh because of, you know, just Why protocol that? levels set uh, by... Uh, the NWS and the National Hurricane Center. So just a bit of a clarification on that. So you can see now we've got the uh, mesoscale imagery now over the storm. Uh, it's been like that for a little while. This is one minute imagery and this is the most up to date imagery that you'll see anywhere. The last image there is at 17 minutes past so it's just two minutes old if that. So you can see the very latest images there. And as of 18 minutes past, which is on my other screen that you can't see, uh, I've got a latest position estimate, 21 miles from Sea Isle City. Actually, it's a bit close to Avalon, 20 miles. So still just off the coast and moving slightly northeast. Yeah, so, you know, at this point, you know, it, it should keep a bit of a north-northeast trend up. So if you see a landfall... Uh, probably going to be more towards Central Jersey, the Atlantic City area, uh, rather than Southern Jersey at this point. 
um, and then a general skirting along the coast. So, I mean, in theory, if it holds up right now, the track forecast in general, you could still see the actual center of the storm go over um, New York City uh, this evening and into the overnight hours. What you'll also see on this graphic uh, on the southeastern side there is there's another blow up of convection. All those little um, little crosses are lightning flashes that have been detected by the satellite. That's one of the cooler things that have come from the new satellite generation. Um, and you can see quite a lot of it going on on the eastern side of the storm right now, away from the yeah. circulation, the center. Yeah, that's a general band. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, well, uh, that's probably going to be very close to, if not over, parts of the Gulf Stream, and that's really what's you know able to fuel kind ah. of burst of convection there. You know, the reason you're not seeing any new convection blow off just just offshore, uh, closer to the Mid Atlantic and New England coastline, uh, just older convection pushing further inland, is because you know sea surface temperatures are markedly cooler uh, to the point where it won't kill a storm, uh, but it'll be harder to generate new intensity um, and new you know blow-ups of convective activity uh, that come on shore. You know, uh, when we were dealing with Florence a while ago, uh, you know, almost two years ago now, when it was making landfall uh, near the South Carolina, North Carolina border, one of the things we had to deal with was because these surface temperatures are still warm, you'd see heavy bands forming and coming on land that, you know, even though, uh, you know, significant portions were already inland for some time, you'd see the, the ocean heat oh. and the, um, you know, vorticity That just went on forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, I mean, in a way, you know, that that's what the exclamation is for this kind of convective blob off the, um, to the well, to the east and south of the, um, you know, actual center of circulation. So that is actually related to Fay, um, but uh, well off the shore, it could potentially pose a bit of a, you know, if it keeps moving consistently north and doesn't just get ripped to shreds as soon as the sea surface temperatures cool down a bit, that could cause some, you know, a bit of rainfall totals to go up in the uh, Rhode Island and eastern massachusetts areas but considering the sea surface temperatures drop down to closer to 24s and 23s up in that area right before land uh you'll probably see the general convective activity with this band die off as it moves north slowly but surely elliot we're back with your uh stream right now and uh, you've marked the center of the storm there just offshore yep and i just wanted to uh, emphasize what sort of wind impacts we might see heading into it so as of now, much of the wind is displaced sort of to the east and northeast. And the gale force winds are probably going to be in an area somewhere like this at the moment. Um, and mm -hmm. that, and as we head um, into the coming hours, um, the center is going to move north, probably somewhere along this sort of path. And the gale force winds will probably shift um, sort of closing in late as the storm weakens as it over the um, next few days. Um, but you could still sort of see some wind impacts in these areas, potentially, if um, current trends continue. Yeah, actually something that we've not properly been through yet is the uh, wind speed probabilities. Um, shall we go through some of those right now? Um, yeah, I think that's good. Let's take a little look. Uh, so. Boston, Massachusetts at 7%, Springfield 27, Worcester 13, Providence, Rhode Island at 10%, Bridgeport, Strat, not far from you, is it? 55%, New Haven 47, Hartford at 35%, yep. New London 20. This is for tropical storm conditions. Um, New York JFK Airport, 70% chance of tropical storm force winds there, 60% in Central Park, 60% at Newark. 53% in Trenton and in Philadelphia, 46%. Atlantic City, no surprise to learn that it's at 93%, uh, although the worst of the storm would appear to have been and gone for that location, but the winds might still get up. Yeah, you know, I, what, this is, you know, one of the trickier parts of, you know, when we're broadcasting tropical cyclone information is, you know, the, the wind speed probability. So even the video update uh, this morning at like, uh, 9 a.m. that was using information from you know very recently before that less than an hour before when i was you know making the production the wind speed probabilities for like new york and new haven were like in the you know low 40s and stuff uh you know it's you know yeah our, our graphics this morning were, were really low as well 
Yeah, but, you know, as the storm gets closer to land, you know, you can say, oh, well, specific areas are going to be much more certain to get tropical storm force winds, and those odds kind of shoot up in the last, you know, couple days. Uh, I do, It did help with Faye, though, at least for its odds for particularly New Jersey and the Delmarva uh, Peninsula, that it developed that, you know, sustained wind force on the yeah. northwestern well, it's quadrant. It's been rather unpredictable. They've un they underestimated the wind field on the western side, um, yeah. and that... You know, we we only knew that that was an underestimate when we only when we saw tropical storm force winds starting to crop up in uh, in Maryland. Yep, very much so. And you know, I mean, to to be fair, you know, these graphics are you know the tropical storm force wind probabilities are kind of a lagging indicator. To be fair, you know, we've already been well aware for uh, about twenty four hours now that it was more likely than not that you know. Uh, parts of New Jersey and New York City into, you know, Long Island and potentially even southwestern Connecticut were more likely than not to get tropical storm force winds. But even when, you know, making a video update yesterday, the odds were technically in the 30% uh, some range for, you know, all those areas. So, it, you know, it takes time to really catch up with that, especially when a storm force forms, because if they say the wind field's smaller than it actually is, then they're going to have to quickly expand where they say, you know, the probabilities of TS force winds are going to be uh, once they find a larger radii. Uh, looking at the latest rapid scan imagery, uh, the very center of the storm, I'm just looking at a different view on my other monitor, which is much up, more up close than what you're seeing on the screen, um, is veering back towards the north again. So it is going to do, you know, it's got a word, hasn't it? Those oscillations. Um and I do think it's going to beeline towards a landfall somewhere around, probably very close to Atlantic City, just south of there. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts right now. Well, I, I was just looking at the comments really quick, and uh, somebody in the comments was saying, East to Eastern Pacific going to have another tropical cyclone? <laughs> and uh, we do have an AOI coming off of Nicaragua, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we do. Uh, we've only got 30% on it at the moment. We do think it will form, but maybe not in five days. But National Hurricane Center very confident at 70%, which I thought has been very intriguing. It's been There's been that discrepancy for a little while now. Uh, so I think we will eventually see that next storm, but... I really don't fancy its chances for being a significant hurricane. Who knows when we'll see the first hurricane strength storm now that Christine has blown it. <laughs> it came so close, though. It came so close. <laughs> so close, Maybe but so far might, away, they say. They, they, might, uh, they might do something in TCR or whatever in a tropical cyclone report, but we'll see. Yeah, I think the problem with Christine is that even though, like, right now, if you at it you know you look oh well oh, well definitely now not not now anymore but let's no, say you know, no. <laughs> two to three hours ago you'd say oh well, maybe there's a chance it's a weak category one hurricane we've seen stuff like that before yeah uh, but a lot of you know the, the satellite uh, measurements that went over it you know as cats and other things actually showed you know much weaker sustained winds than uh even what the NHT was saying right now so like they were saying 70 miles an hour might actually be generous to it because other indicators were showing potentially 45 knots which would be 50 miles oh, an hour my goodness yeah, so even though it looked not completely terrible, you know, about four hours ago, the indicators were just not there to give it what it needed to get over the edge. It reminds me of a miniature version of Lowell 2014 when I look at it now on Visible. Mm. If any of you guys were tracking uh, the East Pacific in 2014. Yeah. Definitely not a bad descriptor. Oh, and that peaked as a uh, Cat 1, I believe, Lowell. I honestly can't remember now. I can't either. Look, it, it's been it's been a long time since we started this stuff. <laughs> yes, and hopefully we're getting better all the time. But here we are once again with another landfall approaching. And it does appear, Strat, that we're going to get this landfall pretty soon. I've not been keeping a real good track of time, so I'm not sure how actually long it will be, but this storm's even on the one minute imagery, it's moving right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was it the last update, the 2 p.m. one, it said it was moving 12 miles an hour, so if it does that hypothetically, it could be 
inland if it moved directly to the coast in you know all right here we go uh, in one hour it has moved north northeast 15 miles if we were to extrapolate that movement which isn't a very wise thing to do but we'll do it anyway it would make landfall if it kept going in the same direction at the same speed it would just about glance the coast um of was that near long beach island anyway the part that sticks out um in three hours time so it would be up there by three hours time at this rate and if it moves inland then you, you'd be talking about landfall in about an hour an hour and a half interesting i wouldn't be too surprised if that ends up happening um but i like we've said you know multiple times i'll probably continue to reiterate it through the event is that you know the worst impacts in the storm are you know displaced the north of it so wherever a landfall occurs the worst impacts have already occurred there and it's not really too significant especially because there's nothing convective wise on the southern side of the storm that will be moving into land and tropical storm first winds are pretty meager uh on the southeastern side and non-existent on the southwestern side right now as well you know uh, like you said earlier, Nathan, this is a really good way to phrase it, really. The landfall is more symbolic than anything else. Uh, well, it is. System. People put so much stock into the landfall. It's so important. It's only well, it's mildly it important if it's a Category 5. I mean, yeah, it's, exactly. it's so much less important with a storm that's not entirely tropical, that has the winds quite spaced away from the center of the circulation. Um to the point where it's pretty irrelevant in terms of impacts because most of New Jersey, well, southern New Jersey's already had the worst impacts and we've still not had landfall. Yeah, you know, a exactly the point, you know. Uh, if this was a very strong system, you know, a major hurricane down uh, making landfall somewhere in the south or, you know, even say hypothetically, it was a category through just off the northeastern coast, the landfall location uh, would matter a lot more for the worst impacts with you know, very strong winds at the landfall location with, you know, uh, heavy storm surge and rainfall and, you know, other convective bands and higher tornado threats than it does with a system like this where most of the, well, actually not most, basically all the convection is displaced to the north and east of the center of the storm and rotating around to the west more and more as we keep going through the day. Um, Isaac's showing us a very wet location right now. Yep, north of exit uh, 147, somewhere in New Jersey, because I don't know the geography of New <laughs> That's Jersey. That's helpful. <laughs> I could have told you that. North, <laughs> I'm assuming it's it's the northern tip of it, seeing how they're still getting rainfall there. Yeah, amount. it must be somewhere north. Hmm. Yeah. Like in general, though, the the worst rainfall for much of the um, northeast or mid Atlantic is going to be done within the next. Uh, three hours or so you know i think there's actually heavier convective bands in pennsylvania at this point than uh, mm. most of northern new jersey to be honest with you what about your place strat any more uh, steady rainfall i mean you got the live cam if, if you take a look at the window is that a bird out there flat. yeah oh, yeah oh, that is a bird that is actually a bird that is a robin um oh. i hope he's having a good time out there in the rain um, quite large I had a heavier spurt of rain a bit earlier so a nice little band came through um you can't really see it too well, but there's actually some droplets of rain on the window itself now. All right. Uh, and, you know, gust your winds in general. But I think that was overall maybe the heaviest actual burst of rain we get at once. We'll probably see some isolated uh, other bands come through in the next couple hours. But Still looks know, very quiet there, though. For the most part, yeah. You know, and you are approximately something like, 100 and, something like 170 miles from the center of the storm. Yeah, just about. Um, you know, I'm in southwestern Connecticut, uh, right next to Fairfield in Connecticut. Just for people that need, you know, geography to verify the general location of where you're seeing this camera from. We'll ask for directions next. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, about 50 miles northeast of New York City. That's 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 the best way to. So explain you need it, really. to know. The, the, the worst rains are almost over for us already. You know, you can see the the radar and stuff. Um, maybe three hours left until. M almost all the rain's gone but the winds will start after that to reach tropical storm force around here because tropical storm force winds extend about 120 miles from the center to the north and since i'm over 150 away yeah about that still but since i'm over 100 away or 150 miles away 
I haven't reached Tropical Storm Force sustained winds yet. So I'll probably reach those uh, later on today with, you know, no actual beef with rainfall uh, or really heavy flooding or anything to back that up at all. Um, it, it's basically a typical nor'easter uh, kind of condition for this region. You know, you see uh, some periods of heavier rain and, and gusty winds and stuff during a lot of it. And then afterwards, the, like, you know, the, a few hours to a day after, you see a lot of heavy wind come in as well on the back end. Uh, the only difference is this is a tropical cyclone. In 10 minutes, this storm has moved north four miles. So I'm trying to extrapolate going off the history and what we think it might do. I would say that we're probably talking landfall near Atlantic City in about an hour's time. Really that quick? Wow. I guess we could stay live until landfall then if it's really going to move that quick. Probably. Is this a sustained movement yet, though, or is this just like, you know, a brief jog to north? Because it has had some But, but we're dealing in jogs right now. It it's makes true. a brief jog oh west, God. then you're talking landfall in half an hour. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> that is true. It is so close to land that just the, you know, small shifts will actually technically bring it on shore. You know, you see the bottom right graphic, right? I think it's WSV3. You know, it's pretty close to shore, the actual center. Um... And looking at Isaac's screen right now, it's clearing up. This is Seaside Park, New Jersey, and just about an hour or two ago it was raining heavily, and now you can see the sun's even coming out by the looks of it there. So that, what you're looking at there, is the exposed center of circulation of uh, Fay. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, you can see blue skies to the top right, and then gray skies, of course, to the top left there. Um... Yeah, it's quite and a change in about an hour there or two. watching by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if nobody told me a tropical storm is hitting this area, I would just think this was just a, just normal a normal summer day. day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a cloudy day at the beach for that guy. Although I would say in general, you know, promoting, you know, safety etiquette during, you know, tropical cyclones or, uh, you know, any general storm threat, even if, you know, the main threat's over in terms of rain and stuff. It's just walking uh, away again. Yeah. Uh, in yep. general... Don't do that, um, unless you're a professional storm chaser or something of the sort. You know, I guess it's fun to go try to go uh, see some bigger waves and things, but you don't want to accidentally get yourself in a dangerous situation when you can just go to the beach again uh, in the next couple days and, you know, social distance and stuff in the sun, you know? Yeah, well, it's remarkable to see that whilst in other places we've got flash flooding going on. Very true. Like, you could probably go an hour north, and that's where the flash flood warnings are right now. And I've heard um, a few little bits about Allentown, and it's about to get another red band there as well. Do we know much about what's going on there, whether it's flash flooding at the minute? I do not see a flash flood warning up there, but I would not be surprised, um, given that they've had quite a bit of rain. Um, I'm going to pull up the totals really quickly. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Now I'm just waiting to be able to I, see that on my end. Again, like earlier, um, a lot of questions coming in are, will the storm strengthen and will it become a hurricane? And as said earlier, uh, perhaps you're probably just joining us, but uh, m the chances of a hurricane are, we're putting it at uh, just nil. Zero. They're not going to happen. Yeah, zero. They're mm -hmm. not going to happen. Um, there are many reasons. As Strat, you said uh, uh, the sea surface temperatures are just not conducive for it to strengthen any further. And as you could see, uh, dry air is actually becoming embedded in the center, so that will further the heat development. I was wondering what that was. So the reds there that are superimposed, that's all dry air? Uh, yes. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> wow, look at that. You know, there's a lot of reasons you can right off the bat why this won't become a hurricane. One, the most of the intensification occurred because of bear clinic activity, not the actual storm generally improving uh, mm. its structure and nature. Um, it's over colder sea surface temperatures that don't favor any additional strengthening. Um, the uh, wind shear is still relatively high, and that's displacing a lot of the convection off. Uh, you'd need actual convection at all around the center for that to do that. And not only would that be blown off, but the sea surface temperatures are a bit too cold to blow up any new significant convection at the center. Um, dry air is obliterating the core of the system now, as is you know, apparent on the visible satellite imagery. Um, you know, even with that eastern kind of side of convection over the Gulf Stream, there's dry air in between that and the core of the system that would inhibit strengthening 
land interaction. Not only is it, you know, about going to be inland soon, but it's currently an interaction with limit strengthening as well. So, you know, just left and right reasons why this really uh, isn't legitimate to talk about as a potential uh, hurricane candidate right now. <laughs> uh, to be honest, Strad, I'm actually surprised it actually was able to reach 60 miles an hour. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a bit surprising. The original points were slow. Okay, okay, don't save that part of the stream. Never we're it. saving that part. Saving it now. Oh, no. 2 2.41 Eastern Standard Time. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Oh, uh, man. But in, in general, uh, you know, a, a lot of the strengthening was, you know, Bear Clinic, and the original forecast was calling for a 50 mile an hour peak. Uh, it got lucky and jumped to 60. But it is also important to note, you know, uh, 50 to 60 miles an hour seems a big jump, um, but when you're talking about tropical storms uh, in general, you know, you go by knots in technical, you know, to say the actual strength, and then you convert that to miles per hour. So it's only a five knot difference between 45 miles an hour and 50 miles an hour, but when you're rounding 45 knots, which is rounds to 50 miles an hour, uh, 50 knots rounds to 60 miles an hour instead of 55, and that's why you see yep. a jump in that. That's why you never see 55 and the uh, Cyclone purists uh, get very angry when they see a 55. Never see uh, 55. You never, was it? You don't see 90 or 95? 95. 95. And you never see like uh, 130, no, 140 something, I 135, think. 135, although they used yeah. to use it uh, way back when until they figured out it was wrong. <laughs> yeah, like I... <laughs> I think 170 doesn't exist. It's 165. That's right. Yeah. Well. Anyway, we're going off topic just a little bit there. Um, the miles are ticking down. I'm continuing to look at the very latest satellite imagery. Um, a new batch of images came in a few minutes ago, and the distance from land now is 18 miles. So that number is incrementally going down um, about a mile every, uh, every six or seven minutes or so. Yeah. So soon enough, this will be coming on shore. At this uh, rate. Someone was asking for the pen potential of seeing a uh, hurricane wind gust. I don't think so. I mean, it's 60 well, miles an hour sustained winds. I think there's... Well, I can go back to the, the homepage of the NHG really quick. Uh, you know, gusts are going to be a bit above that, up to 70 probably. But the strongest winds, you got to keep in mind, aren't associated with the strongest convection, which is already well inland to the north and west, well, probably about over 100 miles from the center of the storm. The strongest actual sustained winds are to the north and east of the center of the storm, um, you know, not even hitting Long Island yet or, you know, parts of uh, northern New Jersey. Um, it's unlikely that hurricane force gusts will end up coming on shore, uh, not just because the storm doesn't have those right now, but because uh, for other factors of it not being able to really strengthen from here on out, it won't ever develop uh -huh. those either. You know, yeah. strong tropical storm force gusts, though, are still enough to, you know, cause, you know, some pretty significant problems for you know fences and if you have flash mm. flooding in the area potentially cause the uprooting of some trees or um other things that could cause some issues but you know uh I, like we've talked about before on stream and video updates it's, it's a borderline cdps one to two uh so even though it is a tropical storm you know uh in general the damages are you know what we'd expect from a typical nor'easter that hits the region earlier in the year which means so long as you're vigilant and acting responsibly and safe you really shouldn't be having too much of a problem Elliot, we're looking at your screen again, and it looks to me as though the rain rates are dying off a little bit. Yeah, and that's basically a signal that much of the worst rainfall is probably past us. Um, you're still going to obviously see some moderately heavy rain in um, parts of southeastern Pennsylvania. And look at that, there's and... hardly anything in, in coastal southern New Jersey and central. Yeah, it's pretty striking, and a lot of it's just removed from the center of circulation just because dry air intrusion in. Much of it just got sheared away. And basically, I don't really see this having um, much heavier rainfall from here on out. Um, of course, you're still going to get some rainfall spreading up northward, but I think totals are going to taper off as we head into tomorrow. Yeah, no, no signs of renewed convection near the center which is usually the source for sustained rainfall there's none of that going on all you've got is that sting in the southeastern side which is probably not going to last very long yeah there's just not enough ocean heat content to really support much from here on out 
I mean, and I guess for land impacts, we can say that is quite fortunate as well, you know? Um, even though there was, you know, bit more concern for higher, you know, rain totals and flooding yesterday, it looks like they've actually downed their estimates, mm -hmm. uh, especially for New England, by a, a decent amount. But that doesn't rule out, mm -hmm. you know, isolated odds of flash flooding from heavier rain rates that can still pop up. So, uh, you know, make sure you're still paying attention to that. You know, if you're in a really low-lying area, storm surge uh, for, like, an on the coastal property, uh, you know, just be aware and stay prepared. You know, uh, most of the impacts though will be away from the coastal parts of New England within 12 hours now, though it looks like. Yeah, the main question is when will it make landfall? Uh, we just watch and wait and look at all the frames coming through. I'm getting more convinced it's coming pretty soon now. Yeah, and could be near, what is it, right around Atlantic City almost, right? So right around Casino Town. Something like that. It's only about, what's that, 20, 25 miles. No, less than that, I'm sorry. 21 miles from Atlantic City. And uh, going back to what Strat said earlier, uh, yeah, we're unlikely to see a hurricane force wind gust. The only reason I could see a hurricane force wind gust is if it gets trapped between two buildings and it has what's called the wind tunnel effect and the wind actually starts to accelerate because it's being compressed, maybe you could see a hurricane force wind gust from there. But in terms of the actual storm producing a hurricane force wind gust, it's very unlikely. Yeah, that is, that is actually a good general point, you know, especially for New York City. You know, if you're higher up, like not on the ground, you know, uh, you know, in a building, uh, you know, a couple hundred feet in the air, you could see that kind of effect kind of accelerate the winds briefly. But that's more of, you know, and a man-made effect than actually related to the actual storm itself. So, yeah, it's um, an artificial effect. It's not exactly. a storm. So the the storm itself won't be generating any hurricane force gusts unless it really, really unexpectedly kicks up a notch, which, like we said, isn't really going to happen. Fortunately enough. So just marking there, little circle. That's its current uh, estimated position on the map there. So. Uh... That icon's a little bit outdated. That's our current estimated center position. And some more images just coming in just now. Um, latest position now as of 46 minutes past, that's just a minute old, is now 19 miles from Atlantic City. And the closest coastal point is 17 and a half miles from Ocean City. So drawing ever closer. Not that it makes much difference. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've said it before, but, you know, it's always important to reiterate because we know there's a lot of viewers cycling in and out that are, you know, sharing the stream to other people or just people clicking on it, stuff like that, uh, is that wherever this makes landfall is going to be mostly symbolic more than anything else for, you know, just writing down on Wikipedia and other news articles for uh, years <laughs> in the future for breaking the drought for the region because, uh, you know, if you take a look at wide shot the satellite imagery, the actual center of the storm has no actual convection on top of it, really. Um, uh, so once you get past the center of the storm, combine that with the fact that there's no tropical storm force winds on the southwestern quadrant, and that this storm is going to be moving mostly, you know, north northeast from here on out. Uh, once you get landfall, anything from that location south on land won't be getting tropical storm force winds anymore. And because the you know convection's almost fully displaced to the north, uh, northeast and northwest. Um, kind of, you know, panning out in a shield formation. Um, the rainfall basically gone as well. So as soon as the eye hits you, well, not even eye, uh, center of the storm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it slip there. Yep, I'm sorry. Uh, once the center of the storm passes you over, you're done, basically. Uh, other than some gusty winds that'll probably still pertain uh, for, you know, next several hours after that. To reiterate where the flash flood warnings are currently in effect, a flash flood warning remains until 5.15 Eastern Time for Somerset, Northeastern Monmouth and Middlesex counties. Um, flash flooding caused by heavy rain, flooding of small creeks and streams, urban areas, highways, streets and underpasses as well as other drainage and low-lying areas is the expected impact. Um, flash flood warning for f until 4.45 for northeastern Ocean, Mercer, Sa southern Somerset, Monmouth, and southwestern Middlesex counties. So that's pretty close by as well. Um, same thing. Um, 
also flash flood warning for a lot of places here uh, Newcastle County, Northwestern Cumberland County, Salem County, Northwestern Camden County, Gloucester County, Northwestern Burlington County, Southeastern Montgomery County, Eastern Chester County, Philadelphia County, and Delaware County in uh, three states there. Um, and also New York area as well. Um, Hudson County, Eastern uh, Passaic County, Union County, Southeastern Bergen County, Essex County, Queens County, Richmond, Bronx, Kings, New York, Manhattan uh, until 4.30 as well. That sounds just about right with all the warnings in place right now. Uh, so flash flooding, obviously the main threat for, you know, quick, you know, rainfall accumulations causing some inclement conditions uh, locally. Uh, fortunately, though, as uh, Elliot noted, since the convection is starting to wane a bit inland as it gets more and more away from the center of circulation and away from the ocean, uh, the general threat for that should start to decline. But obviously, uh, keep it on watch for the next uh, six to 12 hours or so. You know, once you get inland up towards, you know, New England, uh, you know, Western Massachusetts, Vermont, stuff like that, you can still see, you know, uh, a little bit of bursts that come in, cause some heavier rainfall. Uh, cause some you know local problems for a short time period. So just because uh, you know we're nearing the end of game for this storm uh, within the next 12 hours, so doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop paying attention to it or the potential threats fully. Yeah, well, if... well, you're still looking at this image where you've got yep. deep red hues over New York City right now. Yeah, it looks like the there's a you know uh, from that other way there's a little bit of stronger convection coming in across New York City right now. It's actually past Staten Island as well, fortunately. So. But they're going to be mostly done soon. It's just missing them out. Uh, but, you know, in, in general, you know, even though the broad impacts are going to be overall minimal, and this isn't going to be a storm where you see a giant, you know, damage, uh, like, you know, cost in dollars, it doesn't mean we shouldn't monitor it uh, and, you know, make sure that you yourself stay informed uh, about your local area as well. We've just had a question there. What's the Western Pacific looking like? Do you really want to know? Dead. Pretty bad. Crickets. Crickets yeah. right now. He's even broken. Yeah. And a que uh, not a question, but a statement there by Tropical Depression Twenty Four saying Christina is a disappointment. Can't if you're looking for the first bird in semester, or God, not semester. Semester. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm, I'm in college mode a little bit. Uh, Western Hemisphere. Uh, the answer to that statement is yes. Yeah. And if you're just talking climatologically for the <clears throat> Eastern Pacific, the answer is also yes. After looking for a little while, I was able to, to find a, a decent uh, live camera that's showing the coastline of Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey. If you want to pull okay. that up for a second. Here we go. We got that now. It's slowly panning from the coast to the coastline where you can see the buildings on the, the that's far a right in a few seconds Let's here. Let's look at that for a little while. Is that someone it's in the water there? No, I believe that's a pier or something like that. Uh, oh, it's moving, it right, yes. You said yeah, it was it's moving, moving, but I, I was just... It's... Oh, I was supposed to be very concerned for a second. Oh, my God. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, that's been there for a while. So if it is a person, then God be with them, but, you know. <laughs> but you could, you could start to see the buildings kind of on there. the car. It like the, it was, the, the little thing was moving and not the uh, camera. But there's the yeah, coastline it... looking... Where exactly is that Atlantic City, you say? Yeah, downtown Atlantic City. This is just off the coast. Uh, on the beach there and I, uh, earlier when I was looking over this earlier when you guys were talking I could see the buildings a lot clearer but I guess another rain band is moving in now so you can barely see anything over there distance from the center of the storm there now is just 17 miles so that's continuing to tick down and pretty soon I think it's gonna get very close to zero because it looks like the center of this storm is gonna pass very close to that location yeah, so this will probably be a good cam to keep on hand for the actual, you know, landfall whenever it occurs, because if it occurs pretty close to it, you'll probably see uh, what the center of a tropical storm that is devoid of convection at its core really looks like, um, at least in terms of, you know, rainfall and stuff when it happens. Although, to be fair to it, you know, when it really comes ashore, technically, even if it's in this area, uh, you know, elevated waves and, you know, some surge will still be occurring regardless, so... Even though convection and you know winds will be more bare, it's still kind of pushing around the waves a good bit. Yeah, you look at all that out there. 
yet. Uh, mm-hmm. To ask someone that's been to Atlantic City before, I can tell you that is a bit more choppy than you'd be normally seeing for this area. <laughs> I'm <not> sure. <laughs> Let's see if we um, got any more questions. Do you have any? I was just going to say one other thing. Uh, you know, for it's just general base and activity. If you're asking, oh, why is the Western Pacific dead and stuff? It is kind of funny to think we're in July and the Atlantic Basin alone has more storms than, or name storms than the Western and Eastern Pacific. Yeah, combined. someone raised that in the comments there, Jimmy, saying the Atlantic's beating yeah. almost every basin and it's July. Do you think the pattern will keep up? Probably not because the Western Pacific should pass it in theory, you know, later in the year. But if you, you know, for overall activity in the Western Pacific this year, you got to start to be, um, you know, concerned for at least the storm total number. Uh, you know, it's kind of a fortunate thing overall. It means, uh, you know, less storms mean a less chance of we know what you mean. land, of course. But uh, for storm totals, if you see nothing in the next uh, two weeks heading towards the end of July, which is what the GFS model, you know, the longest uh, public range model currently goes out to, then, well, maybe you're seeing a, a pretty weak uh, Western Pacific unless you see... Well, I just want to lot- point out something, though. Even in the quieter seasons, it actually doesn't negate the chances at all of seeing a very powerful typhoon. Um, because, as we know, it only takes one, and if there aren't other storms fighting for energy, then uh, it paves the way clear for maybe that one storm to reach a very powerful intensity, much like what happened in 2010 with Meggy. Yeah, yeah. You know, we obviously hope that doesn't end up happening, but you know, when you have all the ocean heat content, there are no storms taking it up this year, uh, potentially until at least August. Uh, that's you know where you got to be concerned for a particularly strong storm. Uh, but if you're looking um, for two st- things to note really quick here. Go ahead. Um, firstly, I have finally, I was looking for this earlier. The county executive for Suffolk County, C below, basically mentions that the main threat for Suffolk County, New York, just had to be a little bit more specific because Suffolk County, Massachusetts, is the heavy rainfall. So they're asking barrier. So he's telling those who are living in floodplain areas to stay vigilant. And the second thing is, just from the winter ends alone, Suffolk County isn't really getting hit that hard at the moment. That doesn't necessarily say that. That doesn't necessarily mean that um the county is going to get hit later on. But right now, most of the heavy rain is west of the county. Yeah. You know, if we're talking about the odds of, you know, flash flooding and stuff for areas that will probably see, you know, the strongest uh, direct winds related to the storm later on tonight, uh, it's pretty fortunate to know that at least now as we watch this continue to go on, uh, you know, Long Island and parts of southern New England are looking, you know, increasingly less likely to see uh, too high uh, of rain totals in overall. Although uh, I will say uh, within the next three hours, you're going to see the worst rains come in for both of those areas most likely you could still see still up to one to two inches you know localized higher uh but it is fortunate the actual winds aren't going to be fully associated with that core rainfall because that would make things a bit more problematic let's take more questions could Faye not make landfall and just surf the coast in the case of new jersey it's not impossible but it's got to make landfall somewhere in the case of America as a whole, it would have to take a abrupt turn straight east and keep going east for like a day uh, when there's a high pressure system. Oh, it could just stall on the spot and die. It, it could do that too, in theory. If it just stopped moving, I'm pretty sure at this rate, the convection would get so far detached that they would have to call it post-tropical within the next 24 hours. I would really laugh if the storm stalled <laughs> right now. And made landfall one minute after the next National Hurricane Center advisory declares it post tropical. Yeah. I mean, the thing it's almost is, like though, an, it, then then the sandy comparisons would be uh, something to think about <laughs> on a tiny it'd scale. Funny. It'd be funny for the history books, but you know, at the same time, uh, you know, to note, uh, I noted it earlier as well. The protocol changed after Sandy, so even if a storm becomes post tropical. If it's about to impact the land or is impacting land, it'll actually keep the tropical cyclone-related warnings up until after the threat is gone. So, you know, theorize this going post-tropical at 5 p.m., they'd actually keep the tropical storm warnings up probably until at least tomorrow morning, regardless of that. 
Okay, do we think any more tropical storms or even hurricanes will form in July in the Atlantic? Possibly at the end. Um, at the end. Models really aren't showing much um, in terms of tropical cyclone activity for the next couple weeks, but there is a possibility that we could see something at the end of July. Not sure yet. Too, too early to say, really. There's another question. Will skyscrapers be damaged in New York City, Strat? No. Almost certainly not. You could have very small regions where... But I do want to know, because we've never really covered this before, what are the buildings built for over there? Um, in New York City, because, you know, we've had, you know, the LI Express, there was a Cat 3 hitting the region, uh, you know, way back when. Uh, you know, the structures are generally built to handle at least minimal to moderate hurricane strength sustained winds. You know, one of the, pro the you know, if we're talking New York City... Uh, and you want a, an example of hurricane force winds hitting them. Uh, you know, I'll use Sandy, even though it wasn't tropical at landfall. Uh, the main problems that happened were um, massive flooding from the, the you know the gargantuan yep. storm surge that um, you know destroyed subway systems and the battery tunnel and stuff. And people and, have been uh, talking about that as well. With this, what do you think about that aspect? Very unlikely because they actually invested in some reinforcements after Sandy, and considering the surge from this is going to be a fraction of that. You know, the max storm surge expected is three feet. Um, it shouldn't be too much a, a big deal. The problem for New York City is you ha uh, with Sandy was you had two inflows of surge piling into one location. You had the inlet between New Jersey and Staten Island to New York, and the inlet from Long Island pouring in you know 15 feet plus storm surge um, all into one lo central location, which was New York City as a whole rather than wow. just, you know Staten Island area. So but how much was it in the end with Sandy the storm surge? If I'm not mistaken, New, New York City parts of it saw, you know, coastal areas saw 15 to 20 feet. And that's where you saw, you know, subway systems got severely damaged. A place that I go into New York City a lot in Brooklyn um, is still actually having its subway station repaired from Sandy really? this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and the battery tunnel got fully flooded. You know, that was, a, you know, a big thing shown on the news after that as well. Uh, but to compare fate to that, not only is the storm surge total way less, but the area of influence of the storm is way smaller to the point where it can't push as much water around uh, to really push it through the Long Island Sound and shove it into New York City the same way that Sandy could either. Will we see another Dorian this year? I sure hope not. No. That was a question that we received, and the answer we hope is no. Do we think the area of interest in the Atlantic will form? That's the area that we designated at 20%. It isn't official just yet, uh, but... Well, it is what it says. A one in five chance, if you ask us about that. Um, what else do we have? Um, hypothetical questions. Let's get the latest as of uh, one minute past three. A new location estimate for the storm. We now have it. 15 miles from Atlantic City and that webcam that you're looking at right now. Yep. Just showing the general inclement conditions that are ongoing right now as we watch the storm continue to move generally northward. At this point. And, ag and again, this camera is just off the coast of downtown Atlantic City, New Jersey here, and these are the current conditions from uh, there. Let me just uh, get another indicator of how far this storm has moved in an hour. It's moved 15 miles north-northeast in the last hour. Yep, so a bit faster than what the National Hurricane Center designated at 2 p.m. Uh, they were saying 12 then, so it's gone up a little bit. Which, yeah, uh, well, they've probably averaged that motion over six hours. Out. Yeah, they, they averaged that over the prior six hours, typically. But that means if it's moving 15 now and the prior six-hour <laughs> average 12 that the odds of a landfall, you know, closer to Atlantic City and, and then and rather than being up closer to northern New Jersey uh, or New York, you know, goes up because it's going a bit faster, which means the turn, very slight turn to the northeast and north-northeast that will happen uh, will be occurring when the storm's likely already further north, which means it has a more uh, likely chance of moving inland slightly sooner. Let's see. There's not a huge amount to talk about at this point, I don't think. I mean, not particularly. You know, we, we've shown the satellite imagery and stuff. You know, I feel like get, showing that really emphasizes where the, you know, the main two threats of the storm are. 
you know, we have the rain threat, which is going to be mostly gone for New, almost completely gone from New Jersey, and we'll be moving out of um, uh, New York City, can, you know, uh, Southern Connecticut, uh, most of Pennsylvania within the next uh, probably uh, three hours or so. And then the only other really concerns you have in terms of rainfall and flash flooding uh, will be where that blob moves as it, you know, curves up north and then starts to move to the northeast. Uh, with a you know a potential threat for some bit of rainfall in Massachusetts, Rhode Island from this eastern convection blob, uh, if it sustains itself at all, uh, heading in. Although I will note, um, there is a bit of convection coming back into southern New Jersey, uh, a bit closer to the center now. That's from you know uh, rain that's already been inland. Uh, so you might actually see a second spurts of rain over parts of New Jersey because of uh, just general rotation up on the northern side rather than new convection yeah, blowing up one or two little signs of life there but in general the convection over land is weakening it'll continue to do so uh flash flooding risk remains uh particularly for those areas seeing those elevated rainfall totals right now and the winds will come uh probably within the next few hours are uh, beginning to pick up uh for you know new york city uh, Long Island into Connecticut. That's where the most likely tropical storm for sustained winds are. And New York City about to get around three of rainfall there. Yeah. Um, but the winds will come in a bit after the rain. Fortunately, they're not really closely associated with each other. Uh, and then by tomorrow morning, if you wake up in New Jersey, you might even have a sunny day. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, was it... Isaac, we're back with your screen just now. Oh, we were. <laughs> Are you going to New York? I was gonna, I was gonna change it since I saw you weren't on it. So, uh, okay, what's the port? Just... The, the port of New York there. Oh, with sound. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to turn that off, so I'll just. I'll, oh. Okay. Okay. I'll just go well. back to this one. You know, I, I know I know this gets a bit mundane sometimes because I have you know the same information over and over. DM you this. Uh, you know, just to show New York City, we can get a Times Square cam up. I think this is the same cam that we used uh, back during our Corona Beat coverage with the Panda Man. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, no. Well, I, I doubt he's there. I'm the just Panda saying. Man. Well, I mean, he was Pandemonium. Him. Absolutely. It's looking but brighter I'd... at your place, Strat. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It, you know, if you look at the satellite imagery, especially the, the real-time loop, the, the strongest rainfall... Uh, is probably going to be gone within the next uh, hour to two hours at most now. You know, we're kind of coming down that time frame. Um, the strongest convection is leaving Staten Island right now as well. If you just look at infrared radar, it's going to you know show general more rain. But the heaviest amounts aren't going to be remaining around here too much longer, fortunately. So again, we're looking at the rapid scan imagery of Faye, which is moving, swirling towards the north, well, sort of, north-northeast in the last hour, but in the latest few minutes, it's more of a north-northwest, if that makes any sense, and is drawing ever nearer to Atlantic City, just 15 miles away at this point. Um, now let's have another update with uh, Elliot on the latest rain rates. All right, so the rain rates have continued to decrease. I'm not really seeing any yellows there anymore, which is a good sign. And I honestly expect that they'll continue to decrease through the next couple hours, heading into the evening and overnight. But um, you've, of course, started to see more bands over New York. You're getting some moderate rainfall there. And yeah. um, you could still see... A couple inches in a few spots those um, greens there is that an inch an hour is it that would be half an inch half an to inch. an inch so yeah I, I expect you could see maybe two inches maybe three inches at most um out of this in some spots uh heading forward and with every satellite imagery update, and we've just had another one at eight minutes past, it's getting closer and closer, now 14 miles. So it's inevitable, but we are ticking down those miles at this point to what looks like it's going to be an eventual landfall in Atlantic City is the best indication that we've got right at this minute. Uh, Isaac, back to you. You've got yourself sorted out. What are we looking at now? Uh, this is the port of New York live camera. Um, can't see I much can't of it. <laughs> tell. Oh yeah, this is the camera, but you can barely see 
Well, we probably can't even see New York there, but it's right mm-hmm. in front of you. Yeah. But it's currently raining there, of course. I saw I saw a uh, a boat pass on by earlier. Um, not really, nothing really much to see here compared to Jer- New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, someone's actually pointing something out, and I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this confirmed in the chat. Uh, HCCF has uh, put Faye back down to 45 knots or 50 miles an hour some sustained winds, so it looks like the degrading appearance might actually, you know, be contributing to the storm yeah. actually weakening. You that, know, that's uh, really not a surprise because yeah. um, the uh, wind speeds on land have been going down. There's barely any tropical storm force winds on land anymore at all that's being recorded. Yeah, most of the strong winds at this point that are reaching tropical storm force are likely going to be... Uh, offshore to a little bit to the southeast of new york city right now you know south of long island east of you know coastal new jersey those could come on land uh later tonight uh into the evening and the nighttime hours uh but fortunately it looks like the <laughs> storm's actually starting to wind down a bit um definitely you know nhc will probably go back down to 50 miles an hour with their updated landfall because they usually agree with the atcf unless something you know substantially different happens in uh the time period between that and their uh, you know, next update period, which probably shouldn't happen. Uh, you know, we've just been watching the storm slowly decrease in appearance uh, and the impacts start to spread out further north over the past two hours since we started our live commentary phase today. Uh, but for those that were wondering, would this become a hurricane or get hurricane gusts and stuff like that? Now your answer is a pretty definitive no as you see the storm start to wind down. Pretty um, definitive. Interesting question. Could a major hurricane hitting New York City in the context of major unrest and a pandemic and con depression ruin NYC? I'm worried about it in my city. Um, Who's saying that? Well, that's one. Well, I'm going to just put down the major hurricane part first. Was that from a I'm commenter just, just there? Hello. Yeah, from about about seven or eight minutes ago. Um, <laughs> here's my take on it. Oh, I'm not going to mention part. I'm not going to mention the unrest and the pandemic and the economic depression. That's just not going to... I'm not, I'm in a, this is a tropical storm feed right now. But the major hurricane part... Mm, it's a possibility. In the, fu- in the near future, maybe. That's always a possibility. Uh... I mean, you got to put it like this. Uh, a, a major hurricane making a landfalling impact um, in a pretty storm surge prone area would be a catastrophe regardless of a pandemic or uh you know other social unrest and other issues that might be ongoing right now uh so it would probably exasperate you know other issues you know, such as, you know on the economic side and stuff like that and you know potentially socially as well uh but you know the last time we had a storm bring significant surge upwards of 10 feet into new york city uh it was a major problem uh, they've invested in upgrading their defenses, but that doesn't mean you won't see significant problems result from that anyways. Uh, you know, we can't really say, oh, this is going to happen this year. You know, the odds of a of a major hurricane strength system reaching New York City, uh, you know, making a landfall, you know, very close to it at that strength is, re- no matter what, typically very low. Um, but, you know, we've already seen a tropical storm here this, up this year. It would be foolish to say that we couldn't see another system up in the area later in the season. Uh, but at the same time, it'd also be foolish to say definitively that we will. Uh, so, you know, when we're talking about cyclone areas, we can, you know, highlight places where there might be elevated risk threats during the season to keep an eye out for. But to say we will definitely see something at this exact location, uh, narrowing it down as far as a city, wouldn't really be prudent of us to do. And that is a good point. And I just want to emphasize on that. Um uh, significant hurricane impacts on New York City are not really all that common. The last time that a major hurricane made a direct landfall on New York City was in 1938. So I would not be too, too worried about seeing like a Category 3 landfall per se this year. Well, that wasn't even a direct landfall, that one. Yeah, that was... Yeah. That was I mean, it was pretty close. It was long. It was on like central Long Island. Which it was, is yeah. General proximity. But, you know, to also give logic to that, that was with a system that was moving at, like, 60 miles an hour straight northward, you know? So that moved from, like, you know, south of Virginia in latitude, south, like, around the Carolinas in latitude, all the way up to, you know, into the northeastern states of the United States over land within 12 to 18 hours, you know? And that's why, that's the only reason they were able to maintain its strength was because of 
Sleep. It must have brought remarkable storm surge with it, though, because it was a Category oh, yeah. 5. At one point, yeah. Uh, and it, it did bring a lot of storm surge, not only to Long Island, but also Rhode Island. Well, um, but it, that, it's, it's incredibly rare to see a system moving that quickly uh, at, you know, right along the coast of the United States. Uh, that's a tropical cyclone. So you don't really need to worry climatologically too much about something like that happening, although extraordinary events do happen. You know, um, if you're worrying about a major hurricane, you want to try to look for something more typical, uh, like an Irene kind of event or something that just kind of moves straight northwest without being able to, to turn out to sea too much. You know, uh, the 1938 hurricane and, and Sandy are kind of exceptions to the norm of what you'd expect for uh, southern New England and, you know, New York and New Jersey uh, for... Uh, cyclone activity right so anomalies aside i would not really count on seeing a major hurricane impact to that region this year yeah, yeah. i mean typically when you're talking about the northeast if you want uh any odds of hurricane force sustained winds coming on shore uh that's where you're looking at cape cod for those storms that are kind of going out to sea or towards atlantic canada barely clipping them you know uh the main impacts from like a land falling system in our region Will come from a system like Faye right now, which is just moving due north, or um, you know something that's coming further south and skirting up the coast all the way uh, from you know the Carolinas that stem from the Caribbean or or further south. You know. What we're looking for right now is we're waiting for the Atlantic City camera there that Isaac's showing. We're waiting for the weather to clear because when it does, that means that the storm's pretty much making landfall. Pretty much right now, it just appears to be hazy and probably some uh, light rain going on right now, aside from uh, some minor storm surge you see there. Yep. You know, just general erosion and inundation yep. that you see from, you know, minimal up to three feet storm surge. Fortunately, I think this camera doesn't have uh, any structures located directly on the water, so we shouldn't be seeing too significant damage uh, to property. But general erosion, you know, can happen always. And where is that camera mounted anyway? Probably on a pier somewhere uh, near downtown, <laughs> if I had to guess. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. probably a pier un underneath this camera. That's how high do you reckon that is? It's on. hard to tell how high it is. Ooh, maybe 50 feet, I want to say. Hmm. 50, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. I'll just guess, guesstimate around there, seeing how, how uh, there's a car. I think there's a car to the, uh, right there, and it's pretty small on the camera. Is that a car? Oh. I think so. Might be a truck. No idea. <laughs> the resolution's too bad. Yeah, sure. Yes. But uh, mean, it's a slow panning camera. Yep. Yeah. Overall, they're just generally inclement conditions uh, going on. Like, you, you definitely wouldn't... This is not anything safe enough that you want to consider going out to the beach to go for a swim or surf in. You know, always important to advocate that because uh, even <clears> with storms <throat> that seem to be generally weaker, like Faye right now, uh, that's impacting land, or ones that are weaker that are moving away from land and haven't ever impacted it. Um, you know, if you're reckless and, and go out and think it's a nice time to catch some waves, you could be putting your life at risk because of rip currents and, uh, you know, general rougher waves than usual that do occur. You know, I bring up this example because, you know, it's probably the best one uh, just to prove it outright. You know, Hurricane Chris of a couple of years ago uh, formed off the, you know, eastern seaboard and moved away from land um, and never impacted land directly killed a couple of people in America uh, because of rip currents because they were out in the water. So we always, uh, you know, making sure to put it out there that uh, if a tropical cyclone is occurring, you know, near your location and moving away and it has to you uh, or it's coming to impact you or it's moving away, even if it's a few hundred miles away, uh, you shouldn't be getting in the water or doing anything like that because of, you know, currents and other uh, risky factors that could be involved. Right. Lorenzo last year is also a really good example of that because I believe that killed um, like eight people on the East Coast, even though it was several thousand miles away. Just because of its big size, it was generating huge swells that made it all the way to the East Coast. Yep. You know, uh, very, very prudent to use examples like that just to show that, you know, even though a storm isn't at land exactly, that, you know, if it exists, you're taking inherently enhanced risks. Uh, that, you know, you should try to avoid to the absolute best of your possibility. Strat, um, just looking at 
the latest track information and uh, if it was to make landfall in Atlantic City it would be around half an hour but it does appear to me as though it will miss and it will probably make landfall somewhere around well somewhere north of there yeah, it looks like it could be a bit north of that. You know, you have the satellite imagery on the stream and stuff, along with the other uh, imagery. You know, I think the top right one, uh, just to direct viewers to it, to kind of show what's going on, uh, the longer loop that shows that, you know, kind of more initial jog to the to the west at the start of the frame before kind of continuing its track to the north-northeast uh, is what's making more likely a landfall in New Jersey rather than, you know, Long Island, for example. Uh, but at this rate, if it, unless it, you know, has another oscillation or wobble, to the west, we'll probably see something a bit north of Atlantic City. So I'm in, you know, I'm in agreement with that. That's how it's looking on the very latest images, and uh, more will be due in about a minute or two. Uh, Some just put an important question. Yeah, you know, pretty easy one to answer. Pretty relevant. Uh, will the rain from the storm cause the rivers across the region to either flood or be at elevated levels for you know time periods afterwards? You know, the answer to that's yes. Um, you know. Fortunately, the overall rainfall total estimates have been, you know, pushed down back from uh, yesterday. We we're looking closer to eight, more isolated areas of, of six with more widespread, uh, one to two and two to four. Uh, so it's not enough to cause major problems. But, you know, locally, if you have a lot of rain coming really fast, uh, you could be worried about some localized flooding. And there probably will be uh, slightly elevated, um, you know, river levels for at least some time. But it'll mostly be away uh, by the end of the weekend as the system clears out of the region and the rainfall levels, uh, you know, kind of level off. And then there's another question uh, that this would be more relevant last night than today. Someone's asking, will Faye interact with Northern Virginia? Uh, well, it's already well past that at this point. Um, uh, it, any interaction with that doesn't really exist anymore. Oh, just <laughs> yeah, or, no. Uh, land interaction is going to be occurring a bit with the Delmarva still, but decreasing in that area as the system continues to move north in terms of where the convection and center circulation is located. Uh, main land interaction from here on out is going to be at first New Jersey, which is occurring right now clearly. We could likely see a landfall there uh, within the next couple hours. Uh, then you have land interaction occurring with um, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont before potentially moving into Canada as a still tropical depression, according to the National Hurricane Center's latest cone. Uh, but if the trend of the general disassociation of convection from the center of the system continues, then I don't really know how it holds it up that long. <laughs> Although, to be fair to it, um, at least in the past hour or so, uh, convection stopped moving just increasingly further away from the center, and it's just stayed uh, same distance away. It's just moving further north along with the you system. You look at that radar, though, Strat. You see how sharp the gradient is on that band that's moving through New York City, the southern edge of it. Just how sharp that gradient is from where the rain starts. Uh, that is a massive dry air slot there. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and you you, t you could take you could take the visible satellite imagery if you visible you yield similar results. Yeah, you you can yeah. see you know, the uh, there's the you know, some heavier rainfall. You know, the jagged edge of where the cloud begins and ends. <laughs> You got that wider area of convection uh, and rainfall, and then you just have a giant dry slot coming in. This is originally coming in from, you know, the continental U.S. wrapped around the southern part of the storm, then the eastern side, and now it's Very coming around. Very prominent on the latest images. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you can also, you know, see the prompts of this dry air that, uh, you know, inhibited organization further by the isolation of the core of the system from this weird eastern convection blob that's coming up over the Gulf Stream a little bit as well. <laughs> it cuts directly through it. You know, if I were to give it, you know, a, a, a funny analogy to keep people engaged, this is like Phil Swift's chainsaw coming through. Oh, God. Damn it, Strap. Let's go back to the webcam. Isaac, any anything that you've noticed or just more the same? He left. Hello? He left. He left? Oh. Um, that's the voice of Ike. Hello to you as well. Have you been monitoring this storm closely? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So something else that might tell us that when the centre of the storm is passing over, you'll notice that the seas will probably get much calmer, you would think, um, near the centre of the storm. I'm not sure if that's as relevant when it's hitting land, but it's certainly relevant at sea, isn't it? Yeah, more definitely. And, the winds know, die down. Yeah, and, I mean, that's one of the reasons they named Tropical Cyclones, you know, to keep uh, shipping paths, you know, safe so they can get up information from them and, you know, keep shippers informed for, you know, their jobs, basically. That's where uh, some of the oldest so... records come from. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, but... uh, until we really have satellite imagery and easier ways to track cyclones, you know, most of the ways of documentation for things that weren't, you know, near shore or on shore would be from these, you know, shipping boats. Okay, latest. Uh, it's getting a, rather difficult to pin a center on on this because it's clouding over a little bit, and I'm not sure. I'm not really sure of its motion at this point. I think it might be due north right now, and that the center of the storm is approximately 11 miles from Atlantic City but if it kept moving due north it would pass to the east by a few miles and I think that might honestly be the uh, most likely scenario yeah I mean would it be too surprising then you'll probably see a landfall a couple towns for the north if I'm not mistaken if it keeps mm. the trend unless it tilts a bit more to the east and then you just delay it off by a, a tiny bit longer uh but you know overall just a, a tropical cyclone yeah um, well uh, at, at this point sorry. there's not really much else to say do you think we should uh finish up at this point go back to the automated stream yeah i i don't think it's necessarily a bad idea uh you know we'll maybe come back with a brief interjection for a couple of minutes if landfall occurs yeah it could uh, still be know. another hour here yeah, but, you know, there's not really too much to, to say right now. There there's isn't. No... I feel like we're going over gold ground all the time at the minute. <laughs> I mean, I get there's a lot of new viewers coming in all the time, but, you know, a general statement is uh, most of the impacts for the Delmarva Peninsula and southern New Jersey have already passed, other than some gusty winds uh, with some potentially near tropical storm force sustained. Um, you know, New York, northern New Jersey, uh, southern New England, and Pennsylvania – are seeing the worst of it right now for convection and heavy rainfall, uh, which will turn into a bit more higher winds um, as we head through the next few hours. And then when the center passes them, uh, conditions will basically disperse in the near future after that. Well, then uh, we'll finish up for the time being. Uh, we'll throw it back to the automated stream. And when this storm does make landfall, which it looks like it will be about an hour's time, We'll uh, come on the air and say, hello, it's made landfall, and then we'll probably do <laughs> something else. <laughs> um, but most of this is a foregone conclusion at this point. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's uh, the way to say it. Uh, the system looks like it's actually starting to weaken at the moment now. Yeah, definitely. Fortunately so. I would not like to have the system strengthen and coming into land, so I'm pretty sure it makes us all happy to hear that. We could see a, a drop down to 50 miles an hour at the uh, 5 p.m. advisory. Well, I think we're definitely fire. seeing that, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the, the dry air is definitely wrapping. It's choking off the system, definitely. As you see on, uh, I don't know if I can pull it up, but uh, you could definitely see the dry air is inhibiting the system, and it's, it's just yeah. choking it off. It's killing it. Yeah. I mean, ATCF already has it back down to 50 miles an hour. NHC probably follows suit. Um, and that that's basically wrapping up i'm sure it's gonna you know head through the northeastern united states for the next 24 hours but uh at least in terms of you know storm coverage you know the, the bulk of it's uh, over as the storm uh you know the worst impacts are going to start moving away from the most heavily populated areas uh and it continues to weaken over the next uh, 24 hours as it moves inland and uh eventually dissipates right. and gets absorbed within like the next 48 hours or so if anything happens we'll come straight back but for the time being thank you to everyone in my team that have taken part in today's stream and last night and for everyone in the uh, comments section engaging and uh, we got a few interesting bits of information there as well with local locations about what your current conditions are and keep them coming in because it will help other people watching the stream as well potentially for now, we'll hand it to the automated stream and we'll be back as soon as something happens.